Mattel's favourite map by preference. And tends to are therefore in the banning phase chose to start attack. So, you know, we said that there were funky bans. We said there were funky map bans, operator bans. There's also funky side choices because attacking onto theme park is one of the most difficult things to do in this game. It's certainly where you would not want to be when you have to win the map to stay competitive in the final. But 10 star are here anyway. They take away the nook. They take away the mirror as well. Now, mirror is obviously an operator that doesn't get spoke about in the bans a lot these days, but it does enable, mirror enables those roams up on the top floor. Mirror enables those, basically the bunk daycare defenses, just hold a mirror window top yellow, hold a mirror window control and really be very oppressive. And then obviously, there was a lot of Solace play from 10 star. We've seen Dunlimited just yeet that one out of there, get rid of Solace on this map, because from what I'm hearing for teams, Fiend Park is literally the Solace map. She is so good on this map. As you said, we saw Solus for one map, and that was quite yep. enough, <laughs> it seems, for these teams um, as the Solus band does come through. So we're going to be heading into round one. We're on theme park. It is, if you've just joined us, one map to nil for Dunn Limited. They went and won Clubhouse, much yeah. like they did all the way back in the upper bracket quarterfinals, where Ten Star were able to then turn things around and bring it back for a 2-1 win that seems both of these teams ultimately still make making it through to the final. So we're going to go upstairs for our first defensive mm -hmm. start. Obviously, a lot of talk um, has been done initially about Armory and Throne, potentially, and the difficulty attacking onto there, which I completely agree with. Um, Team Liquid always springs to mind when I think yeah. about difficulty attacking onto that site. The number of times that I've seen them breach the maintenance wall and then just fail to get in and get the diffuser down. Um, you know, And the reason that I bring Liquid up there is if a team like Liquid are going to struggle to do that, it tells you just how difficult it is. I wonder if 10 star are going to try something here. I've seen a, a seventh pick, as our good friend XR Troika likes to call them, onto the Amaru and onto the Dokubi. Now, obviously, Dokubi is a free speed now. Not mentioned as much as it maybe should have been, because that's a very strong buff for a strong, very strong operator. But also, Jake's playing the Amaru. I'm wondering whether 10 star are going to try something fast down the hatches, through the windows, in cafe, all at the same time, to try and cheese around a little bit. Now, obviously, if Jake's does that, particularly on the uh, kitchen windows, there are frost mats under those windows, so it's not going to be as effective. Army might have accidentally countered Tensile without knowing that, but, you know, obviously that's the redundancy that's planned by bringing the frost. Nordwind is going to be the one tasked with holding them out of Cafe. It's looking like actually quite a direct approach from 10 Star here. Try and get yourself into Cafe whilst we've got the book on the far side of the map, just potentially going to work into control and through initiation. So it's definitely going to be a two sided push coming in. Nordwind trying to hold on. We've seen usually this position is tasked to some of your top gunners. Um, it's a favourite. I've mentioned Liquid already. Mm -hmm. Nesk will usually be the one to take up um, that position historically. So you really are trying to put a strong gun there and Nordwind has been hitting some great shots so far but Jag's not messing about gets himself straight into bathroom but he's gonna get shut down fresh Roderick was there ready and waiting and into his open arms the Amaru flew and down she went it's five versus three in favor of Dunlimited yeah but for the Amaru I think that was pretty scripted from 10 star and Dunlimited have done a very good a very good defense and very good awareness that that was going to come in. Obviously, Rorik wasn't going to know that Anamaru was going to appear in the bathroom window, but the Dokubi call is the trigger. Something's going to be happen. Be aware, be vigilant, and he was, and he got the kill. That was a big kill. 5v3 as opposed to 4v4, completely different on this site. Now, 10 star, they're going to maybe have to try and have a look, have to lurk. They do have an opportunity to hit site a little bit faster here and actually take a 3v3 because there is still players over towards Top Dragon, over towards Control Initiation. If they manage to get in and they manage to kill Nordwind and they can take over site pretty quickly, there is still a chance, but it is quite a small chance for them. And as you see, they've taken quite a lot of time. Army's going to be getting back. The Dunlimited players will start getting back to site now and I think maybe, maybe just maybe 10 Star missed their window of opportunity there. Yeah, that's it. Done limited. Of, uh, the, yeah, you can see there's very little movement um, from those red silhouettes, and it's because they're just going to stay and hold their angles now. Aza manages to get in, get one, get two, and that's the performance that we need to see coming from Aza, but he gets caught in the reload. Hypex manages to take him down, and that leaves us now in a 1v3. It's all up to Jonka. He's taking damage. He's taking bullets. No matter which way he looks, there's just... 
Danger in every direction. Nearly finds his man behind the bomb chassis, but 12 seconds left to go. Three kills to find. It's almost an impossible task. He manages to get the first, but then shut down on the trade. It's going to be Rorick to close things out, and that's going to be the first round going to Dunn Limited on a nice defence. But as a, I picked him up in the first, and I commented on Clubhouse that he'd had some difficulties. Got to give him a shout there. Two beautiful kills to get 10 star moving. Yeah, it was a nice entry. It was a nice attempt at trying to recover the round. But one thing that I would say is that the desk mentioned during the during the pregame of this map is that they wanted to see 10 star be a little bit more committed, a little bit more decisive to just go and hit the site, to just make that decision. If you're going to do it, do it with fast, do it with conviction. And I think we saw 10 star okay, basically okay. their initial their plan A failed and then their plan B, they took 30, 40 seconds to actually try and deliver it. And it was just way too long. It allowed Dunlimited to get back and they lost the round. I think for 10 star that again, that's the same criticism that we're going to go through with. We want to see them commit to those plans and do it. And uh, it's not happened so far. Now, obviously you're not expecting to win all of your theme park attacks, but it's not the best start for them. Not ideal when you've got, uh, you know, Armory and Throne looming as well as Dunlimited yep. take us to the other upstairs site. This time it's going to be Initiation and Office um, before they will inevitably move us down there. So, uh, you know, if I'm playing on 10 star, I'm thinking, right, if we don't get this one, we're very possibly 3-0 down here because we know that Armory Throne is going to be a difficult site mm -hmm. to attack. Um, so I, I like, you know, if this is a bit of a mind game from Dunlimited potentially, a <laughs> little bit of confidence, I like it. I love to see it. One of the things that I was actually going to point up uh, right at the start of this map is what's going to be the third site for these teams because I expected it to be Armory Throne and Bunks Daker. Would it be Initiation Office because it's really fallen out of favour, especially inside of EU? Or would it be, you know, the Lav and Storage area of the map because that third site, you know, Lav and Storage is not not traditionally a good site, but teams also don't recently like initiation. But apart from Dunlimited, they're really fancy in that site. They're really fancy in defending the top floor and really trying to contest these entry points as we will see them do it again. Now, Jegs, he's going to have a look. He's got a drone in front of him to go into cash. He's going to have a look on the cash balcony. I feel like I've just cast a cast in there because he's gone, nah, I don't fancy that and I'm going to go away somewhere else. Obviously, Yonkers playing the Osser. So, you know, teams on theme park generally try to crutch onto something that allows entry. We see a lot of Monty play on this cash balcony for that reason. Yonkers going to try and use the Osser to try and enable the entry as well. Um, and 10 Star, they've, they've kind of wasted a minute by just scouting out the area, seeing what they can do and figuring out where they're going from, as it looks like they might do a kind of split push going from the cafe side and the cash balcony side. You sort of see this aggression every time from Dunlimited there. Nordwind, he gets a Flores drone in behind his shield. So what does he do? Does he dip himself away to safety? No, he mm -hmm. runs into Cafe. He runs towards the door. He's ready for that challenge coming in because potentially 10 star think, yeah, we'll get in at the same time whilst that is happening. And I love that from Dunlimited so far. There's absolutely nothing that 10 star seem to be able to do here to put them on the back foot. If anything, they just come back at them even harder. It's like attack is the best form of defense here. Hypex with a tight angle underneath that keeper barricade. He just can't find his shots, but two minutes has been wasted now, Fresh. Yeah, there's really not much map control taken by 10 star. They've not got a foothold in whatsoever. It's gonna rely on basically Hypex playing his cards right, finds one, finds two, hidden behind barriers, hidden behind pillars, and he's just playing top dragon and he's making it his own. So Noxo can do nothing. Why is it then can do nothing? There's one on the control hatch. And realistically, 10 star, two minutes into this round, they've still not entered the building. Hypex has just made that look completely casual. He's won the round from that one spot. A kill comes in now, and another one from Army. Rorik and Army just tidying things up there at the end. But make no mistake, that round was Hypex versus 10 star, and Hypex came out on top. Absolutely beautiful play from Top Dragon, and casual as you like. The thing that frustrates me a little bit there, Fresh, mm -hmm. is 10 star, particularly the Ash, uh, the opening kill onto Jegs. So Jegs knows, Jegs knows that he's Top Dragon. He's, he's He's had shots taken at him from underneath the Kiba barricade. He's dipped back around. They've flashed that top position. He walks in and he doesn't even check yeah. top drag. He's checking the stairs, but it's an absolute freebie for Hypex. The challenge on the window is too late. Hypex has enough time to turn around and hit that shot as well. And it all just seems a little bit out of sync for 10 star. Yeah, and I think, you know, that that's obviously a big problem for them. And this is how theme park plays out. And, you know, Tristan said it on the desk. This is how theme park, you know, will play out with teams that want to be aggressive and want to roam. And I think coming back to that Solace ban, for example, 
is that the one reason that I'm seeing, you know, professional teams and professional players saying it's Solace is strong, Solace is good, maybe a little bit too good to the fact that teams are forced to banner. When you're forced to ban Solace, and for example, Amira's banned, that leaves more of the crutch operators on the defense available. It means his army is available. We saw his army used devastatingly in those two top floor defenses. It means that Valkyrie is available. As soon as his army is off, off the board, Valkyrie is on the board. And it's weird. It's, it's how defenses can basically revolve around these kind of win conditions because of the fact that Solus needs to be banned. And I think you know that's a, a little taster. These two rounds are a little taster for what's to come in terms of the general play. You know, leading up to Six Invitational is that when Solus is banned. There's going to be a lot of his army. There's going to be a lot of Valkyrie. And we would expect those defense win rates, therefore, to move up. Rorik just going to be lurking around Gong there, just looking for the opportunity once again. There's just nothing changing from Dunlimited here. They're so aggressive on these defenses. You picked up on it earlier, Fresh, the way mm -hmm. that they're right up against those entry points, giving 10 star absolutely nothing free in terms of map control. They just can't even get inside of the building at the minute, and that continues for Dunlimited. Rorick just holding that tight angle onto the door. We've got Nordwind underneath. He's looking for that cafe door. He's potentially looking for a Nitro. <laughs> Onto the player coming in here. Azur is going to step foot in, takes a little bit of damage, but he needs to be very cautious. And Oxo, though, manages to take down the pulse, and that could be a big moment in this round. Yeah, especially if he can get access to those cameras. There's two match show cams on site, three Valkyrie cameras, one in the pocket of Rorik, actually. That if he can manage to hack those cameras in terms of Zanoxo, he may well manage to get a lot of information, swing that back in the favor of 10 star, because there's only five drones as the Doku call does come out. Hypex is aware that Book's in the office, may well push him, throws the C4, doesn't connect to the Book. Jenks is now up to 50 HP, and he will be punished by Azza. That's the Doku call masking the sound, and Azza, again, just quick note, is that he's actually started this game really well, given his clubhouse performance. So, you know, the mental resilient, resilience and fortitude that he's showing, it's pretty good. 10 star, they're in a good spot if, as Jegs has been downed, I believe, by a cap can trap. Um, but they're still in a good spot. They will still be able to execute. They just need to now focus on this final phase, which is going to be opening up those walls between Wyzerden and between Yonka, opening the walls up and actually forcing this execute. Next kill is very important here, and Dunlimited desperately need it. Now then, IWI is just going to be challenging up at the top of Dragon there. He knows there's a man ahead of him. He's going to dip himself away. Surely he gets killed here. No, manages to escape. He's going to get himself into maintenance, and he can continue to be a nuisance on the flanks. Rorix heading upstairs as well, and I'm not sure that 10 Star are aware of this fresh. There could be a freebie, and it's the third. And the Iana, huge plays from Rorik there. And that could have just swung the round in Dunlimited's favour. But a kill comes in from YZN. Jegs is chasing down Rorik. He's trying to get himself back to sight. If he can do this, this is going to be an absolute steal. There's one down in 90 corridor. 15 seconds left to go. He can get back in. They can just hold their angles here. This is winnable. Nine seconds left to go. It is all up to the Breachers. Army with a huge double on the outer. And with three seconds left to go, it's all that Rorik can do to mop things up and 10 star lose a round that very much should have to been there oh that's got to be triggering a timeout i'd be so surprised if we don't see one from 10 star that's all three attacks lost but especially the manner that 10 star lost that attack in they had full control they had 5v3 all they needed to do was dedicated somebody to and that as the time timeout comes in all they needed to do was dedicate somebody to just hold that flank, to hold that aggression, to be aware, because it is Siege 101, and I can't stress this enough. If you're watching at home and you're in a 3v5, don't just hide, get aggressive. It's what you should be doing. That's what Dunlimited did there, and they managed to recover that round convincingly well, and I am so, so, so impressed with their composure in the late round across, what, a map and a, a third so far? They've been really good in this late round of just finding ways to win the round, even when the conditions of the round are not advantageous to them. Rorik, not just for his flank in that round, but mm -hmm. I think overall performance deserves a shout at this point. Seven and zero across yep. the first three rounds, going fantastically well. Interestingly, again, you know, I'm not trying to pick up on those players that are that are struggling to get into the game too much, but we've spoken at length about Jegs. We've spoken, you mentioned it in the first map, about how sometimes 10 star can be a bit top heavy on stats. They'll have a couple of players that are right up there at the top of the board doing the, the lion's share of the fragging. Jegs is usually one of those players. He hasn't had a kill yet on theme park. And it's just seeming to, to mirror the way that 10 Star are struggling to get themselves going on the scoreboard. And yes, they're on the attack of theme park. 
yes, it's not the end of the world, but, and it's a big but, they need to get a round or two on the scoreboard soon because if not, this one is going to run away from yep. them quickly. If this is a 5-1, a 6-0, dare I say it, done limited, only need to find one attack. So as difficult as the attack might be, you'd have to still put your money on them doing it. I had quite a long conversation with Rorick last night. Um, I know him, you know, decently well. And I, he basically said that they're, it's a grudge match for them as well. You know, we hyped this up as a grudge match for 10 Star with what Rorick said about them in the interview. It's a little bit of a grudge match for the Russian team here in that they've seen the two Russian EUL teams both make changes in this transfer window. And he basically said that none of the Dunlimited players were even considered for those changes. And he believes that they're a better team than, you know, some of the Russian teams that we've seen inside of EUL. And he wanted to prove that today. That was his big proving point. It wasn't, I want to prove that I'm better than Tensa. It's, I want to prove that I'm the best Russian team or we're the best Russian team and people should be talking about us. And by gosh, are they doing it so far? They're looking so good as this round is now fully underway. We're going to see uh, Jeg's 10 star make a lurk in through main. So it's not sure if he's aware that the Malusi is actually there of Hypex. Might get caught out, and this might be a very bad start to the round. Free Fire comes in. Hypex gets himself up the Dragon Stairs. Chip damage both sides, but that engagement is one that's going to be saved for a rainy day, I guess. Jex comes away very marginally the better mm. out of the two, I think. Um, but Hypex just doing a great job there again. It's just keeping them guessing. It's challenging that point of entry. I'm going to keep coming back to it because it's something that Dunlimited are doing so well on the defence here. And you feel like Ten Star are going to have to match it. And once again, 7-0 becomes 8-0 as Rorik manages to find Zanoxo with an entry. And that is advantage Dunlimited once again. Halfway through the round and I fail to see any major progress that 10 star have made yet fresh i mean we're talking what another minute 30 not really in the building sure jex was in the building sure as is in but it's only the entrance points to the building it's only into maintenance it's only into cafe here and realistically as has got no support with him if he gets punished here there's no refragability as chip damage again does come in and he's had to back off two minutes in and basically on the cafe taken this is so slow from 10 star and it's not looking good for them so far Nordwin just holding a tight angle there, takes a little peek, can't find his man, but it just again backs them off, slows them down. Going to put out the Wamai Magnet, and he's just going to keep bouncing around, dancing in behind this reinforcement. There you go, the Magnet sucks in that nave and just keeps him safe for a little bit longer. 45 seconds left to go, 10 star failing to get anything going. The Wamai finds a kill, takes down Jonker, five versus three now, four versus three as YZN managed to get one back, but you just feel that the clock is going to be the enemy again. He's Moving up from Arcade Stairs. He's pushing in behind the flashbangs. Is it going to be enough? He gets spotted out. They know that he's moving to bumps. A beautiful challenge on the back of the in for Nordwin. He shuts down the attempt at the push from top Arcade. Another man comes in and just fills that position. 15 seconds left to go. Two kills finders now in a 2v2. It's Azza. It's Jegs. It's 2v1 as once again Rorik pops up when Dung Limited need him most. It's 10 and 0. And Rorik is flying on theme park it's a roller coaster ride and he is loving every second of it oh wow he's paid his admission fee but he's got so much more out of this game so far and it's four nil for dunlimited it's four nil and for 10 star it's really falling apart and i'll be honest tim i'm, I'm gonna preface this i can't believe i'm saying this maybe 10 star needs to take some inspiration from g2 because when g2 played theme park when g2 played theme park they said basically our strats suck. So we're just going to do a load of cheesy stuff and basically make the rounds 50-50. We're going to rush. We're going to do crutch operators and we're going to just find a way to pick up a couple of rounds on the attack and get through to the defense. Now, 10 Star, they've had four rounds of trying their defaults. They've had four rounds of trying their strats and it's all gone desperately wrong. So I think you need to throw it out the window now. You need to get yourself some good guns. Get yourself some crutch operators, a Monty to force yourself into the building, play off the back of each other, refrack each other out and then actually try and pick up these last couple of rounds. It doesn't look like they're going to do that because they're bringing basically the same lineup as last time they attacked this, other than the sense. But I feel like that's what they should do. They should try and cheese these rounds, try and get 50-50. Maybe if they're lucky, pick up a couple and have something to defend. Because as it's going right now, it looks like we could be seeing that 6-0 that you were talking about, Tim. 
It could be on its way. Hypex in that same position, I think, once again. Um, we saw him at the top of Dragon Stairs. The mute Jammer has been placed there, so we might just have him um, trying to hold down that area. And again, it's just this playing right up to the borders of the map by Dunlimited, not giving 10 star an inch lest they take a mile. So Dunlimited, again, down here in maintenance. It could be too easy for Hypex. He's going to go out and get the kill and takes the electronics on his way back in, Fred. That is, is anything too difficult? IWI finds Jags and Dunlimited once again have just brought the thunder. That is absolutely criminal that he's been able to get out, kill the player, and shoot the Claymore and get back in. I thought, yeah. I thought it was a good play taking the one for one at least, right? Because, you know, Hypex, he's playing an operator. But yeah, sure, it is his army. But still, take the one for one, get one off the board. It creates you much more space to play about in. And he gets all of them. That's a 5v2. And I think this is just 10 star capitulating right now. Where's the refrag? Where's the players together? It's kind of all just, all these kills have been so spread out across the map. It's just been trying crouch walk in somewhere we're seeing yonker crouch walk up yellow stairs if he dies who's refracking him there's been no refrags from 10 star and out of all of them this has definitely been the most disappointing round so far Sinoxo manages to find one. Can that get something going for 10 star in this round? They at least have the Talon Shields of Orsa to play behind. It might give them something. It might give them that little bit of cheese fresh, that advantage that you said they needed. Maybe they can get in there. Maybe they can create a stronghold and start finding a kill or two. One minute, 10 left to go. And look how patient Unlimited are being right now. This reminds me of sort of an almost peak NIP style performance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason that I say that is NIP used to be masters of coming in, getting aggressive at the beginning of the round and then taking the foot off the gas in the second half. So not so, so close, shut down by Rorik. But yeah, NIP used to be so good at getting those initial kills, bringing that explosion, just like Dunlimited did there, and then settling back in until the end of the round, until that desperation has to kick in from the other team and then they hit them hard and Dunlimited are doing that fantastically well at the minute. It's even how Dunlimited in the end there set up those crossfires. Uh, you saw that as soon as, I think it was the Frost, I want to say it was IWI, I could be wrong on who, it, who was playing the Frost, maybe Army actually, was actually, you know, taking that engagement with Gunker as he vaulted in. That's the trigger for Rorik to swing. And every single time it was swinging off the back of another person's engagement. Again, it's what the desk said was that Dunlimited were doing well, was that they were bringing two people to swing things together. They were refragging each other. It has been absolutely non-existent from 10 star and it has been basically the preface of how Dunlimited are playing is that they're playing everything together off the back of crossfires and refrags and it's night and day difference and that's you know probably the key reason why they're 5-0 up looking to defend the best site on theme park to go 6-0 up. They've absolutely slammed 10 star yeah. so far. I, it just feels like 10 star, and, and we see this from time to time, Fresh. You watch enough competitive siege, you get to a point where you can recognize when a team is broken. Um, and it, it just feels like 10 star have reached that point where like nothing will work. They can't, you know, they just can't get anything going. And right now this one is just running away from them so quickly and look at the look at the aggression look at the confidence from Dunlimited here far you know they, they've stopped them getting in the building so far but they've at least let them go and knock on a barricade <laughs> first but now they're ripping them down and they're ready to go you've got Rorik 12 and 0 on the Valkyrie and he's ready to run out here he wants this he's waiting for the repel and if Jonka gives it to him this could be big trouble Luckily, Jonker will decide to drone that door rather than just repel up and will not be punished. That will be an engagement for another day. Rorik, he's looking like he's feeling it, though. And obviously, he is feeling it. It's 12 and 0, but he's looking like he wants to try and force these engagements. We've all done it in ranked. We've all had a few kills in ranked and thought, yeah, I'm untouchable. I'm going to swing everything. Rorik's looking a little bit like that. So maybe that's an in that 10 star could exploit. But, you know, you'd have to allow him to do that if he's 12 and 0 and says, boys, I'm feeling it. I'm going to swing everything. Hypex is in the same position once again that we've been seeing him be so deadly, so lethal from before. But this time he's got Jegs working in on the far side of him. He's going to take the spray down on the yellow ping information, but it just wasn't enough for him to be able to find the kill. If nothing else, it might just slow 10 star down a little bit as we reach the halfway mark. They have this time managed to get themselves inside the map. They're taking out utility, but they do still have a pulse underneath. The opportunity for vertical nitros is slightly more limited 
but still possible. He is going to miss that one, though. You've really got to take your moment here on Theme Park if you want to hit those vertical explosives. Yeah, Tensar haven't actually done too bad this round. They've actually entered the building. They've got the entry kill onto Rorik. There is still a player in lab or storage, I think, that they don't yet know about. Yes, it's IWI. So if they don't know about him, IWI has a massive win condition here of being able to push either of the breaches late. I guess they're about to find out, given that the lab and storage window has just been opened, the storage window, that is. IWI does find the down onto one. He will presumably be pushed from bathroom as well, and that will be a good refract by Tenstar. This is so much better so far from them that actually they're going to get into a 4v3 scenario. They're going to have the verts. They presumably will therefore get the breaches very quickly. There's only new jammers on them. And therefore, they can maybe have an execute. However, it's that late round composure. It's that 30 seconds left where Dunlimited have outshone them today. Must win round coming up here for 10 star. 30 seconds left to go. Aggression as they push on into sight after that breach gets opened up. It was the Gemini clone to begin with, but operators are soon to follow. 18 seconds left to go, and there's an important kill. Nordwind, he manages to almost find one, but no, disappears behind that wall of light dropped in by the sense. The plant is going down. Hypex takes a beautiful peek, gets one. There's a second, and that is surely the round 1v1. All Hypex has to do is wait for his moment, and there is his moment. And in that first half fresh, just like the map itself, this is like an abandoned theme park for 10 Star. There's just nothing for them to go on. Oh, again, there's... <laughs> They're just letting things go in the late round there. Of course, the defenders are going to get aggressive. Of course, they're going to try and push into drug. Of course, they're going to push into barrels. Of course, they're going to push through the sense walls. You can't just believe that it's a brick wall and just, you know, oh, the sense wall's up. We can just go plant behind it. They've got to be covering it. And Tenstar were completely, again, unaware in that late round with a complete lack of composure. And it's cost them again. And that's a 6 nil half. I don't think you could see a more perfect theme park defensive half if you possibly tried than what Dunlimited have just put on show for us there. You know, it's only, you know, in my opinion, it's now only a matter of time until they win EU Challenge League. As you say, one attack win in the next six, and they are the champions of EU Challenger League, and it would be absolutely rightfully so. And it's, you know, we love to see a lower bracket run. It's worth reminding everybody that, you know, up to this point in the final, um, of course, the Challenger League uh, in, in EU this year was was a, a two um, a two bracket. So you had your upper bracket, you had your lower bracket, you had your second opportunity. Dunlimited were actually beaten by 10 star in the upper bracket quarterfinals, dropped down to the lower bracket. And this is, this is the culmination of that lower bracket miracle run that we love to see. They actually only dropped one map in the entirety of the lower bracket they beat death row 2-0 they beat wild 2-0 they beat ascend 2-0 it was 2-1 against makers the first map that they lost was in the lower bracket final and it's looking like they might not even drop a map here in the grand final against 10 star because they have been head and shoulders above them here on theme park and coming into this fresh you said mm -hmm. 10 star they like theme park it's a good map for them <laughs> yeah. you know this has been a bit of an unusual map ban we've sort of you know we've had clubhouse picked by 10 star which is generally a unlimited map they've almost picked 10 stars map but i think we're starting to see exactly why unlimited have picked theme park what a Fourth, they've been on here. Yeah, it was a good map for both teams, and you can definitely see from Dunlimited's point of view why. And I think straight away, Dunlimited have, have got onto that crutch factor that, you know, Tensar hadn't. They've brought the Monty. Wherever Army ends up entering, he will be able to force his way into that room. He will be able to give Dunlimited a foothold into that room. It looks like it's going to be cash side. So now, where's Jeg's help, basically? You know, there is two players. There is Jegs and another player in the bathroom there. I believe it might be Yonka. But again, the Monty will force that foothold, will force the defenders back. And this is what Dunlimited are doing that 10 Star did not do already in their first attack. That's it. You know, I commented a couple of times how Dunlimited were preventing them getting the map. They were being aggressive right up at the, the boundaries. And they've already overcome that problem. They're not giving 10 Star that opportunity um, by bringing the Monty along. Army just making nice, slow progress here. He gets himself across into office. They've got themselves established now pretty much all the way up to initiation. So the next step is they can start thinking about getting a breach. They just need to clear Azar out. Once he's gone, they can think about how they are going to move forward 
into the site. So it's good progress here. Now they're aware of the Jaeger now. So he's going to start getting bullied from the Monty. He's basically stuck if they can move through control quickly enough here. There's absolutely nowhere for Azza to go. He's going to have to fight his way out of here. He does have a crossfire with the door. Well, well with the control door and the break room door here from site though. So it's about the players that are supporting him, making sure that they can support him for the players that are going to push him. They don't. They just allow Hypex to walk in on him. Wiser then does find a refrag onto Rorik, but that's map control again, gained by Dunlimited. 40 seconds left, 4v4 execute. This is certainly doable. This round is not yet over for Dunlimited. It's certainly not over for 10 Star either, though. They have 30 seconds to hold on for, and a lot of work still to be done by Dunlimited. They might have a bit of map control, but they don't have access into the site. That could be an important kill, though, as Nordwin manages to find Jags. Four versus two now. It's starting to fall apart for 10 Star. Is this it? Are they going to lose the Challenger League in a 7 0 second map, as it is all for YZN to do? Seven seconds left to go. Dunlimited need to think about getting this diffuser down. It's in the hands of army YZN manages to find one can 10 star survive here and keep fighting to just hold on for another round he tries to stop the plant but no unlimited they get the final kill they are the winners of EU Challenger League 2022 and they do it in flawless fashion on theme park if you could have a dream to win a UCL you would say, I want to win it with a 7-0. And that's exactly what Dunlimited did. And I think they're good for it. That was an absolute theme park masterclass put on by them. I think they won the ban phase ultimately. They won their opponent's map pick. And then they won their own map pick in a flawless fashion. You really cannot get better for that. And as well, they also got the revenge onto 10 Star, obviously who put them in that lower bracket right at the start of Challenger League for that lower bracket run. What a performance. We've just seen an absolute masterclass. That is a classic performance on Theme Park. That's going to be one that you refer back to when you talk about how to play Theme Park. And Rorik and Hypex deserve a huge shout. 23 and 6 between the two of them. What a performance they've just put in to take their team over the line. And a huge congratulations to Dunlimited. Beautiful performance. A great lower bracket run ended in such fashion against Tensa. Well, Rorik's interview when he made the CL final was a little bit spicy with Janeiro. I'm assuming he will be having a winner's interview with Milos in the desk shortly after this break. Hello, hello, hello. Congratulations to Dunlimited. Incredible matchup. They absolutely roll over 10 star 7 to 0. Now, you were trash talking saying that Jack would be a better IGL. <laughs> no, he was the one trash talking saying he's the better IGL. I just agreed with him. Well, there you go. I, I think that was. We should just painful, direct all blame to Jack. That was real painful. Yeah. So let's talk about Dunlimited. What did they do properly here? Well, I mean, if you compare the attacks, well, we only saw one attack from Don Limited, but that final attack that they did was so much better than we saw on the side of 10 Star because we talked about how slow 10 Star were when taking their map ground, how much time it took for them to finally come to a decision. I mean, I think round three was probably the round that they were closest to actually getting a victory down. They were had a five to three lead. There was one person offside as well. They 
were set to go for an execute and it took them a proper two minutes to decide what they actually wanted to do. And then when you take a look at the Unlimited's attack in that final round, they went to go with that Monty in the caster, stood there, forcing the Roamers to go out, and then help those other teammates to go up the Dragon Stairs, clear the side of initiation, just force out that single Roamer there as well, and then play off that Men Advantage that we've been talking about since the beginning of this map. I mean, even just looking at it there from 10 star side, to only get two entries over an entire matchup, two of the seven rounds on entry, and you're on attack first as well. You've got the better guns. Really sad from them. It was it was quite painful to watch how long it took them to do things. But again, this is what happens when maybe you're a little bit rattled from the first map. You're upset you lost your map pick. Maybe you've not got the chance to practice the map that much. You've not played the map that much. Maybe you're not expecting to go to your number one preference map because you think the other team will ban it. It could be all sorts of reasons, but ultimately, they just didn't play as a team on those attacks. Let's just put it out there. I mean, Hypex, he was playing Twitch with the Rogue skin. I think that says everything. Oh, we'll be keeping a keen eye open now, won't we, Milos? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Anyways, here it is. Rorik is our MVP of the match. Why? I mean, look at the performance. He went, what was it, 9-0 and or 10-0 and or something at I one point? I think he got to 12-0. Yeah, 12 or 11-0 or something like that. It's absolutely crazy. He's picking up a lot of frags. We have to talk about Hypex as well, being consistent over those two maps. But Rorik, like we talked about the interview, or the, the cast talked about the interview that he did and how he really had a bit of grudge with this match and how he really wants to win it. Well, he's up there. And it's he about it. proving that yeah. they're not just better than 10-star, yeah. and better, they're better than all the Russian teams that are in EUL, the two that we have, of course. It's going to be a hard task now, though, with, with the players that are now playing in EUL for the Russian sides, the recent changes. It's hard, but based None on that... None of them were considered. This is the thing that's, that. you know, it's really hurting on the inside. Yeah, well, I can imagine. But sometimes you do need that, though. You do need that fuel of, like, well, I really want to beat these people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need that, and, well, it's clearly it's fueled Rorik, so it's worked well for them. All right, so let's look back on this now from Tensor's point of view. Yes, they got 7 out. All right, let's put that aside what can they do to improve? Because they made it to the grand final from the upper bracket. They beat the Unlimited earlier in it. So the potential for them to win this is definitely there. The Unlimited were just better today. So what can they learn from going into 23? I really wonder how much the mental aspect's been torturing them today. I mean, we saw that almost team kill in the final round, for example, as well. Team kill earlier on Clubhouse. And then if you lose your own map pick, that must hurt your mental going into the second game too. I think that definitely hurt them a little bit today. So dealing with that, taking this as a loss, accepting that you can't always win them because they have been winning a lot this year. And then to take that on into the next game and you know try and get stronger from that. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll bounce back from this because that's the worst we've ever seen them. I've never seen 10 star look like that. I, I said it for Clubhouse, I thought the attacks were the big main problem for them, and it just, it carried over, but it, it got even more exaggerated on a map that is so hard to attack in the first place. You have to play together, you have to make a quick decision, and I just didn't see it. Okay. Uh, did, did things really get complicated, you think, from the map bands onwards? It's a very risky thing to pick the map that you lost previously against the same opponent, then against the same opponent, it shows that you have the confidence and you have the strat work done. But then if your attacks come out looking like that and you have to bounce back on a defense, which works, but not close enough to get it to an overtime, for example, that's just, it's it's not enough. It's it's unfortunate for them. It looks like, if you look at the map specifically as well, or the map end stage where it began, um, I think both these teams love Chalet. I was really sad to not see Chalet today because both teams are very good at it. It's a high preference map for them. But then there's also maps, for example, where 10 stars um, excel in, but that's a very decent or standard ban, which we see happen often for Dunlimited. Limited. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it, it's that sort of type of map like Chalet oh. as well, like Border that we saw last time. It's a lot less fundamentals, it's a lot less utility burn. Like we were seeing a round, for example, where Dunlimited had an Azami set up on top Dragon for Fiem, and it was, it took 10 star pretty get much the these higher rounds to get rid of it, and, and then didn't, didn't even shit. trade favorably after it. They spent two minutes to set up, and then had, I think, like three game, people on the same what? window, Talking and just an Ash bullshit. crouch walking below. That, that isn't really what you want, but you don't really get the opportunity to do that on a map like Chalet or Border, so maybe this is why it is high preference for a team like 10 star, so that you can kind of negate these issues. Well, we have an interview ready with our losing team first. We'll have to chat with 10star because we think it's important to highlight all the talent that we have here in Challenger League. So, Kangaroo Kenny, come on up. Hello, hello, Kenny. Hello, 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 hello. I mean, I have to say, congrats on making it so far into Challenger League. It's already a massive achievement for you and the team, but it's good, 
at least from my point of view, to get to talk to you and hear you know, some of your thoughts and how this game went, despite you know the the end scoreline. Uh, first of all, the maps. What are your thoughts on those bans? Why did you go back to Clubhouse when that was an issue earlier in the CL bracket? Um, I think the the ban phase today was we we took a risk. I think that's plain and simple. Um, we we had Clubhouse specifically prepped for them. I think if we don't lose two two plus man advantage attacks, we win the map. Mm -hmm. um, we had a one v one on defense, which which Yonker unfortunately lost as well. Like the the map span on a span on a dime, I think, and it, it could have gone either way. Unfortunately, it didn't go our way. We didn't handle our man advantage situations properly. Um, we I got to give props to Unlimited. We fully didn't expect theme park at all. Um, in our first playoffs game, they banned it against us because we, funny enough, we ten would them on a scrim in it like the week before CL. Um, so I I was not expecting that map. So props to them for changing up their map pool and being able to bring stuff out to to surprise us. This is why we felt between both maps that there was a struggle on the attacking side. Yeah, I think we got the entry kill on every single clubhouse attack, and we just obviously didn't convert it properly. Um, theme park was theme park. We we have we've hardly scrimmed theme park to be honest because we didn't expect it as a map. So we were just. I, th I heard Tristan saying about we couldn't deal with the Azami top dragon. We just haven't scrimmed the map for. I think we scrimmed it once in the last like two weeks. So um, they just caught us off guard with with the band. So that was that was really it. We didn't really expect to to, to win theme park, but as soon as we clubhouse didn't go our favor, it was it was uh, an always an uphill battle. Well, at the end of it, you still made it to the top two, which means you secured ten thousand euros for the team, which is great. But also some somehow even more importantly the close qualifier for europe for si23 and this is where i talk to you about i guess the future of 10 star going into next year there's some things of course that haven't been revealed on the future of rainbow six esports that we'll know over the next couple of months but about the close qualifiers what can we expect from you and the squad uh, what are things that you feel you need to learn from the past few weeks um, unfortunately, we're not in the closed qualifiers. We Wait, open the advantage qualifiers. the open advantage was for the open qualifier playoffs, yeah. but we've already so played those. You played those last weekend, and Makers knocked us out. So, God damn it. there's no SI closed calls for us. God damn it. Okay, well, scratch that. What's the future? <laughs> God damn it. Anyways, go ahead. See, I can take an L today too. Uh, <laughs> it's not a nice position, is it? Um, the future for Ten Star. Well, I think we're looking forward to a break because. We started the year off in Yukon 2, which is a T4 league, and we have been going non-stop. We've just been promoted, 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 and we've we've hardly had a break. It's been pretty pretty tiring, so I think we're all happy for a, a month-long break or so, and then whatever um, Ubisoft announced with Challenger League for, for 2023, we'll wait for that announcement, and then obviously that'll be our, our next endeavor. So um, it's kind of the future's unknown. Mm -hmm. Uh, for us, we'll we'll take our time off and, and see what the, the the lay of the land is. Fair enough. Well, Kenny, if anything, I'd uh, love to have you on here in the interview sometime again in the future. But, you know, to wrap it all up with a neat little bow, anything you would like to say to the 10 star fans out there? Um, I'd just like to congratulate Unlimited first. I think um, they didn't get enough credit throughout their CL season for, for how well they played. Um, I think a lot of teams underestimated them and that's why they, they ended up losing to them because they just thought, oh, they're, they're an easy team oh, and, and, and we'll take them uh, without no no issues. Um, so I've got to give props to them, how well they played. They were a better team today um, and they they fully deserve it. For for people who support us, obviously, thank you for supporting us. It wasn't the end of the year that we had, we expected, but with us being sixth place in, in our national division in June, I think reaching the Challenge League final is far exceeding our expectations. Our goals for for this year was to make Challenge League. We did that. We exceeded and, and made the final. So I'm happy with the year. Didn't end how we wanted, but that's life. Stuff happens, you know. Can't 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 have it all. Fair enough. Well, Kenny, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you on here again. Still a second-rated team here in Challenger League in Europe, it's pretty darn impressive, especially given the run, those six months that everything has kind of changed through in the squad. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you sometime in the future. 
I wish you a good end to the year. Bye bye. Thank you very much. You too. <laughs> be funny there it is. I took an L on that. Shit. I can't have Happens. good interviews all the time, but Kenny was great. Yeah, it was, it was a good wholesome, to hear from him. Wholesome interview as well in some yeah. ways, I would say. And very pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of truth in there as well. Like, of course, you can't it's win them all, and you have had a lot of good battles and a good few things. But you know, unfortunately, this one didn't go their way. C'est la vie, que yeah. sera sera. For sure, I really respect Kenny's honesty there. To be completely honest, like saying things like they've not scrimmed theme park, they weren't expecting to go there. I alluded to it myself. You don't expect the team to take you to your number one preference. So why would you prepare for it as much, especially when it's just one series, especially when you have those open qualifiers that you had to play for? There was a lot of compounding factors, again, mentioning as well that they got openings on attack and then couldn't close them out. It's exactly what we spoke about. I think he's being very honest. He's being very open with it. And I think they should just be proud of what they achieved because yeah. I think so many people wrote them off. I even myself included at times when you lose multiple players who are essentially your carry. Sure. It just shows the strength of the team, the coaches, the staff that are there. The organization as well, I know, is so supportive of that team. And to be able to do that and to get to where they've got, I don't think you can be too upset. I agree with that. And indeed, it's smart play from the Unlimited by well, manipulating the band phase that kind of type of way, so you get on maps for ten stars that they don't really expect. It's good that we're seeing props to that as well because it is a very smart thing to do, and they played oh that out very well today. What I'm trying to do. Sometimes you just get outplayed, not just in the server but even out of it. Maybe this game was also one in the band phase. We're discussing that on three of us and kind of seeing, okay, is this really the right map to be going to theme park? Like you mentioned, it looked like they weren't prepared. Turns out, speaking to Kenny, no, they actually weren't. Because, well, depth of map pool is something that takes a lot of time and preparation. And yes, even EUL teams that kind of play this as their full-time job still struggle to have a deep map pool, let alone teams in Challenger League that are in Tier 4 competition, basically, at the second level of Nationals. That's still pretty impressive. Yeah, it's really commendable. You, ha you have to understand the full context of it. Yeah. And credit to Kenny as well. This is, wasn't a winner's, in, a winner's interview where he came out and he said the stuff they lost, and they lost pretty resoundingly and disappointingly and heart-wrenchingly, <laughs> guttingly, no, in fact. Hell. But still, he came out and he, he said what he said, and it's very commendable. You don't brush this shit? I yeah. agree with it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I fully agree. Like if you look at the map and phase well, and I did some map stats and analytics, like you do see that the limited have a bigger map pool, so you can play around with that Yellow a little bit more <laughs> than 10 star, for example. We've only played hey, six maps where the limited played seven in comparison. You look at the camera like, forgot okay. it. Well, yeah, yeah. we're waiting for our second interview to be prepared because we're having, you know, a chat <laughs> about Yo, his teeth. Uh, Yellow about this, this game, the future with both the squads. I have to correct myself. The camera, nigga, like in the interview, both unlimited about. and 10 star moved on to the open qualifiers and unfortunately that's where they took the l's and you know it was team secret and makers that made it out into the close calls in january so there you go it's a correction um you know both teams trying their best but to you now what would the future of Dunlimited look like because this seems like squad if not as a whole at least there are some players in there that can shine immensely on other rosters that also have been having changes. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one to say without knowing the players personally. I'm not going to pretend that I speak with the Dunlimited players what? on a regular basis. Um, Freshwood. So, well, of course he would. He's an expert. That's what he's paid to do. That's why he's not on this desk right now, which he's uh, being paid to do. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's hard to say, right? Because this is the first time that we've had this closed league in EU. So it's the first time that a team has actually been like, okay, we're literally the best in tier two but we're not in tier one. Yeah. So what do we do? They're probably going to have those conversations amongst themselves and not even with other teams. They're going to be talking with each other and be like, well, what do we do? <laughs> like, are we going to play SI? Are we not going to play SI? Am I going to get picked up? Are you going to get picked up? It's all open in the air right now. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Our second interview is ready. So let's have a chat with our champions. Hello, hello, hello. Stratsvice, Rorik, congratulations on the victory for you and Unlimited. You know, you're trash talking 10 stars saying, you know what, they're actually not that great of a team. That that caught Janeiro off guard for a moment there. So you have to preface it now. What What's the deal with that? Do you actually believe that? Mm, uh, I want to say that I was hyping. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't say uh, that 10 star is a bad team. Like it was it was some kind of joke. Mm -hmm. So I have no uh, any negative for them. Like Get GG's today. We were uh, stronger, I guess. 
talk to me about the map bands then, because we were just talking to Kenny and he was saying, actually, they, they kind of outplayed us in the map bands there. We took a gamble on Clubhouse. Mm, we were expecting um, some kind of maybe Border or Wheeler, because we did not ban it. Uh, all I want to say is that we did not prep any maps for them uh, this week. Like it was our default, but uh, with a lot of uh, teamwork, uh, it was great today. Uh, we did not practice theme park for one month, I guess. Like it was, uh, we were adapting uh, in game, I'll say. Did Did you mm. try to surprise yourself also with the theme park picks? You're like, okay, are, are we good no, at this no. or not? Uh, we were ready to play any map they uh, will pick, but they picked Clubhouse. Uh, this one I really didn't expect. Uh, because we, across all of uh, Challenger League, we won uh, Clubhouse in all our matches mm -hmm. we were playing. Mm, uh, Team Park, like, um, it's really a, a different side map. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're, uh, when you're very, um, when you're very uh, strong uh, in defense, you can easily w win it. You just need one round or two in attack. I mean, you were having still some struggles on the attack on Clubhouse. What do you think that was the case? Mm, they banned Thermite. We uh, uh, we got some some problems. We were play uh, I mean, Army Army was playing Maverick for like first time in two months, I guess, on Club. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we uh, we had some uh, problems with adapting. We should uh, like we we really in game we adapted re really well uh, to their strats. Like it was nothing special, I guess. Uh, also, I want to say that uh, Ten Star is really struggling against some aggression plays. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, aggression, uh, aggression plays. Sorry for my English. That's okay. It's fantastic. Um, uh, not really. <laughs> um, uh, you can also also you can check uh, their game on Inuquals uh, against Tempers. Uh, they were playing really aggressive, uh, and they uh, they won it two zero. It was our plan for today. Okay, then everything was well planned. And you said very specifically that today was not just about beating 10 star. It's more about proving to everybody that you can hang with the best in Russia because we know there's some incredible names of players and teams in there, especially the salty part, I guess, is no one on the team being considered for transfers. So I want to hear your opinions on that. Mm, I want to say that... Uh all I need now is Team Secret, B uh, BO3, uh, not at midnight, <laughs> we will beat them. I think uh, we, we are really proving uh, now that uh, we can uh, play in Euro European Challenge, uh, not Challenge in Pro League, sorry. But we don't have uh, any opportunity now, it, it, it is sad. It is how, how it be, as, uh, as a philosopher once said. But Rorik, still nothing to take away from you, because today you are in the champions of Challenger League and I guess everybody's been watching around and waiting is Dunlimited Limited gonna do it because you've been slipping through I guess people's minds even Kenya was just telling us you kind of flew under everybody's ra radar until oh damn they're in the grand final now and they actually have a pretty good shot of winning it mm, really uh, uh, all we got today for for win uh, is a uh, Liquipedia page player page and the a, uh, a class and discord <laughs> and some money uh, i, I didn't good. really happy today <laughs> yeah it's good but i didn't really happy at the end of it still a champion and that's what yeah, matters if anything we all know that challenger league is not just about you know the entire team moving on to eu league of course that was the state in the past but it's also to see hey this player, these players are really, really good. Maybe we should consider picking them up in the future. I know a lot of Russian teams that might have had better opportunities if they spoke better English, but you're already like pretty much there, Rorik. So probably other players too. So just, you know, putting things Maybe. out there, just putting things out there in the ether. Anyways, thank you very much for the interview. I want to leave a moment for you here to say something if you'd like to all the Dunlimited fans out there, because yeah, it's a hell of a run what you've done. <coughs> Um, we had a really good supporters, as I said in the last interview, uh, in the Russian community, uh, like, uh, they were supporting us very hard, uh, especially last matches against Samkers and uh, 10 Star today. I want to thank everyone. Uh, 
even uh, even some uh, like other fans not from Russia like it's uh, it's really good it's really good I feel it I feel it by myself and I have uh, really good emotions about it I want to thank everyone guys Thank you very much, Aurora. Congratulations again, champ. You did it, you and the team. That's Down Limited Champions of Challenger League. So I hope to, to see you soon, maybe on the interview. We'll have a chat over the next few months. That's I'm just hopeful in that way. It's nice having a chat with you. Aurora, thank, thank you, thank you again. For interview. Take care, and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you. Bye. There it is. Good to hear from both players. Thank you very much to both Kenny and Rorik for joining us. Of course, despite the loser interviews and how very difficult they can be to navigate, especially if you forget, if, if you forget uh, an important detail. But still, it happens. Here we are. Final thoughts on game number one, because we still have a second best of three to go through today. I mean, yeah, it's it's quite sad for both teams that the future is a bit unsure at the moment. I mean, they've both stated it themselves. Uh, we did see the limit also have really good fence, for example. That was a very... I, I've seen that in Twitch sets as well. They are very much uh, standing behind their team. So I hope for both teams that they'll find a solid place for next year where they can continue to compete and, you know, keep those fans behind them. Yeah, I mean, it is sad, right, for both teams. It's like a little bit bittersweet for both. Yeah but they both have things to be happy about, things to be sad about. Let's just hope that we see them playing Siege again soon. And I'd like to say for Dun Limited, being a player that has that level of teamwork that we saw today, I promise you there'll be opportunities for you to play in far bigger tournaments than you have done today, and it will happen eventually. Yeah, very hopeful for both of these squads because there is a lot of potential in here. We want more and more players and teams to come in and play either in UK2 or in any national that we have here in Europe because look at Look at EU League right now. A third of it, at least, are new players that have come in in less than in the past two years. That's massive. So everybody gets that experience. And you know, NA had, I guess, started two years before us in the late 2018, 2019 era in refreshing, getting new players, the fresh blood that they needed here in Europe. It took us a bit longer, but look, the success is already showing with two EUL teams winning two majors in a row. So I'm just saying, we got to keep it up. And we got seven teams that are going to next SI, so we got a good shot at it. Anyways, here's an update again on the bracket. It's pretty simple. We had one more game. It's best of three, and that was Dunlimited versus 10 star. A good win for Dunlimited. 2-0 to clean it all up. They're going in from the lower bracket all the way to the final for a 2 Oh, a victory. That is the end of our Challenger League season for this year. Of course, before Challenger League, uh, we have the entirety of the year where it's all the nationals that get played and the qualifiers, etc., 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 that lead into the bracket. Big thank you again to our CL talent that were right here giving you the matches over the past few weeks. And now on to our next game. Can we pull up that EUL finals bracket? one more time because we started off with four teams yesterday we were finishing game number one yesterday around this time that was wolves versus eminem a big upset as eminem made it to the grand final and now bds await after beating heroic in game number two one more best of three and that is the end of 2022 for eu league i know it's sad but we still have a lot to be happy about because i want to see the major champions go up against Eminem that a year ago just qualified into EU League and they played two majors and an SI and they're qualified to the next one. That's a hell of a storyline. We'll be back to talk about all of that in just a few.
everybody, it's time for AU League Grand Final Eminem Gaming versus Team BDS. A year ago, Eminem Gaming graced us here in EU League with their presence after winning Challenger League. That was a great game they had against TT9, but also on the other side, BDS are our reigning major champions. So there's a lot on the line, not just bragging rights, but also, of course, the cash that you get out of winning this game, but also closing out 2022 with a victory to move on because both of these teams are qualified for six invitational in Montreal, Montreal, as some would like to call it, in uh, February. So very much excited for that. Hello, welcome back to the desk. I'm Alex Somatic, your host. With me are Anne, Tristan, or see this, and Mr. Jack, Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. All right, fresh. Usually Jack Daniels, but that'll do. I don't think we can do that. No. Anyways, that'll be for the after party. Anyway, let's have a chat about our two squads starting off with M and M. Tristan, what can you tell us about the team? Well, more, what more can we say than from yesterday? Bye. It's a team that's incredibly flexible. They play quite different, sort of slow siege, methodical siege, teamwork siege. It's sort of the opposite of what we're seeing from a lot of the teams right now. But that core base is the teamwork. Regardless of how fast you play, they're a team that works really hard. A mixture of youth, a mixture of experience, a great IGL. This is how they're here. I do wonder how good they would be if they adopted the meta that is currently being played right now, though, because they've certainly got the players capable of doing so. That being said, regardless, they stick to their identity. Two majors in the last year may play their side 22. They're going to SI 23 and the final of the UL finals. It's pretty good for them, I think. I mean, yeah, of all of, out of all the four teams that participate in the EUL finals, this is a team that's been together for the longest period of time. And you'd say that really helps with the teamwork, as you mentioned before as well. They do struggle a little bit on attack. We saw it yesterday as well. It took them quite long to get rid of some utility that Wolves put up in Cafe, for example. That is something I'll be looking out for today for them, if they can get that going on a little bit better. All right, and if we're to talk about the team on the other side, the winners of Yun Sherping, they finally done it. You know, they... they went up with an international trophy at a major tour event. It only took like seven million years. Yeah, they've they've broken through that that ceiling. They've broken through whatever barrier was stopping them winning so many international events when they were favorites. They went into Yunchiping not as favorites and they went and won it. And you know, there's gonna be one guy that we'll talk about as the addition. That's the game changer for this team that already made one of the best teams in the world. He gave them new dynamics. He gave them new ways of thinking, new ideas. That is of course Likafak. Since his introduction, BDS have looked nothing short of superb. Yeah, and I think yesterday, despite not always winning opening engagements, for example, they showed that they can still battle back later on into the rounds. And something that was also mentioned in the interview by LMs is that they have this adaptability to play against these more aggressive teams. That's something I really liked seeing from them as well. And another fact that they did really well yesterday is if you read into an operator BAM stage, they really brought the right anti-breach operators, for example, on Skyscraper, which yep. really helped them win our rounds. All right, well, if we were to compare two players, well, we can, because we have two players that are analysts selected, and they're head-to-head, -head. so let's bring it up. Thank you very much, production. Who is it? Who are those two players? It's my question. It's Yuzus and Likefak, Jack. Well, I think these Didn't two say players go. are, well, in my opinion, these two players are not playing the first entry for their team. But they are absolutely the star players that when you need a round to be won, they go and win it. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Are you looking at the operators that are there? They're playing SMG 11s on the fence. They're playing vertical. They're lurking. But still, look at the KD. Look at the entries, the cost, the kills per round. They can sort of do everything. And I think that is such an enormous credit right now in a meta where you can play certain maps very aggressive, but you have to play other maps slow. Again, it's a credit to, to being that type of player that can do a bit of everything. Yeah, in my opinion, this is part of a very strong front line that we have on the side of Eminem, where he could really step up, really get those clutches in the moments that it matters the most, get that ground, and that's something that we do see League of Fact do a lot. You get that ground, you be, you, you're lurking from underneath, you're working with nades vertically, but for League of Fact on his side as well, he's part of the, well, second IGL almost, like we heard in the Major, where it does help Elems to bring in those fresh and new ideas. Jack, just mm -hmm. one thing to highlight, is that when I said League of Fact, you didn't respond with... No, he's the GOAT. He is the GOAT. <laughs> I've told him that. I've told him that enough that the when when you speak to League Fact, he is so humble, by the way. He is. Like as a player, as a person around, he is so humble. So we're gonna keep him there. We're gonna not call him the GOAT, even though he is for now. We're just gonna Just not jinx him or what? We're just not gonna give him an ego. That's what it is. Because we want him to now go on and win an SI for Europe, right? So we'll That's true. we'll leave him where he is. We're we're looking into the long term. Mm. Very well done. Very well done. All right. 
our maps for this series. Again, it's best of three, just like we had, or well, yesterday and our game before. And who goes first? That's BDS. And uh, they take Clubhouse first. Okay. BDS are allowed yep. to play Clubhouse. That's completely fine. They start off on defense. Wow, that's also very, very good. Uh, theme Park is an attack start. That's Eminem's second pick. And finally, Skyscraper. Eminem will ban out Cafe before it and uh, start on defense on Sky. And what's up here? I mean, uh, looking at Eminem's map pool, right? I think BDS yesterday had to win the game because they have a bigger map pool than they did than Heroic did, for example. I think it's kind of the same situation with Eminem, to be honest, because their insta bans are bank and border. So you see them, those two bans are banned out first by Eminem. But then, of course, you're going to end up on a map like Clubhouse because why would BDS not pick a map like Clubhouse when it's still open in the books? They have really good stats on it. For Eminem, though, it is probably th maybe one of their worst attacking and defending win rates, and they've already suffered two losses on it it's a tough one to look at from eminem because we uh, say it every time clubhouse against bds why are you playing it yeah <laughs> and so long uh, since they lost it and obviously one disappointing moment for them but then other than that other than that they're just they've been outstanding on that map they're constantly outstanding okay. on that map so why would you take it lips, but with si Ooh. coming up do you want to reveal to teams that you actually do play bank and border? Yeah. Maybe not. Look, look, we won't dive into that too much. We won't dive into it too much, but I think Eminem will have been hoping to have played Cafe instead because they won it yesterday, but BDS have just gone for tried and trusted. Yeah. BD club. BDS are always going to pick club when it's available, right? Yeah. The theme park, I think, is very good for Eminem. Eminem are known for a long time as a good theme park team, you know, for the past probably, what, year, year and a half. They are a team that always play theme park. Even when they were a CL, you know, back into the Yukin days, they always played it. Um, however, then the decider of Skyscraper, that's the one that I hope we get there. Because obviously we've had two zeros right throughout this whole weekend. I hope we get to Skyscraper. Because both of those teams yesterday, when they played Skyscraper as a decider, they played the win conditions of that map perfectly. Yep. They put in really good performances. And I think as a really high quality Skyscraper, I hope we get to see that from them. Same exact score. Uh, same for attack and defense, 7-3 for both, you know, 3-4. to four. So they were both pretty darn happy with Skyscrapers. I... I echo the same thing that you said, Jack. I really hope that we get it. But the question is, will we? Now, Clubhouse is obviously a big linchpin. Taking BDS to Clubhouse, always a massive mistake. I think many teams have learned it. But what can Eminem actually do here to break through BDS? Because they shown us yesterday against Wolves that, yeah, Eminem actually have it in them. I think sometimes you get to a point where two teams are so good and they've become, they've got so far into a tournament that it doesn't really matter too much about the maps. It doesn't really matter too much about the style. It's just two actually good teams, teams that work together, playing against each other. And ultimately, it comes down to who trades favorably, who's picking up entry kills, who's staying alive, who's clutching rounds. There's so many moments against teams like this. Like we had it when we played against Wolves at stage. We lost like two 1v3s. Mm -hmm. It completely could change the map. And I think that clutch factor from players like Bride, players like Shaiko, players like Efac, that could, that could do it for BDS. But Eminem and no slouches. Users, Solitov, they can all do it. I think when you're at the point of going to the map where, you know, okay. Clubhouse from Eminem was known as a very long time as one of their perma bands. They've been trying to integrate it a lot more. I think when you go into that kind of map, you're probably going into Eminem knowing, yeah, we're not the favorites. It is their map pick. They are pretty much, apart from one loss uh, to W7M, unbeaten over the last two years huh? on the map. They love it. That maybe does give them a level of freedom to be quite expressive on the map, to just try things warm themselves up, play together. You never know what yeah. might happen, but they might have already put it in their heads as like, right, it's fine. It's a free one. And then we go again for map two and map three will be the true test. I mean, we know that Eminem can be very creative with their operator bends. We've seen all kinds of bends coming out, like a Monty or a Ying, Flores, Amaru, Bandit, you name it. So you can bend very specifically against what BDS likes to play on a map where you have a lot of information what BDS likes to play on Clubhouse. But BDS on their side, they're also quite... Uh, well, they, they're quite targeted on their attack events towards the team that they're playing against. So Eminem, or there's one player from Eminem that is not ready yet. So we're going to take another couple extra minutes that we can discuss about operator bands. Maybe, perhaps, on Clubhouse. And also, what sets BDS apart? Oh, Lobby's ready. We just got it. There you go. All right. Friends, thank you very much. Who takes map one? Just say the name. BDS. 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 All right. Chat, who do you think will take map one? Me. Type it in there. Anyways, thank you very much. BDS versus Eminem, our EUL grand final for 2022 begins. And we have two beautiful casters take you through it. Not just the looks, but also the voice. It's Hap and M. Enjoy.
Thank you very much, Milos, for the compliments, for the Christmas theming. Wonderful. I just wonder, he said the looks and the voice. Yeah. So it's like, who's who's the looks and who's the voice? Or do we both have both? Both, both okay. Both, both have both. All right, there we go. I, I just need to clarify that, just, uh, just in case. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. What like do we have before yeah. us? BDS Clubhouse. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's on the board, BDS are going to opt for it. They, they would love to play it. Because it, it's not even that it's the most expressive of maps. It's a staple. It's a stable part of Siege at Tier 1. Every single team in the world, in the regions, knows how to play a club. Not many teams now to play it like BDS. Yeah, it, it is that saying, right? Like, you do not take uh, take BDS to club. And just like we used to say, you do not take a Russian team to clubhouse, like yeah. was always portrayed a little bit earlier. But when those two, two come together, BDS even wins it out at that very moment. So BDS truly know fully well how to play this map. Now, the first ban is coming through. It's going to be a Thatcher. That is going to be uh, slowing down the attack just ever so slightly. I mean, making sure that there needs to be a bit more coordination from the attacking side to open up these breaches, especially with the Maverick to be removed. So what you're looking at now is potentially Cade or a Bandit Band to at least speed up the attack slightly again. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, it, I'm so Christmassy today. We were given a song for Easy. That was I was. Uh, I've just had a drink delivered to me Very by nice. a wonderful observer, Stefan Easy. Coming. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna dox him like that. Sorry. I wasn't gonna, gonna give away his assassination coordinates like that. <laughs> if you want his address, <laughs> let me know. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a, man, That's a joke. Solace oh, banned. As well. Solace is banned. But is also the K that was talking about. Is this the first two on Solace ban? And um, well, we've seen it in challenge loot, but that's tier two, so I guess yes. That's why I said tier one. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I yeah. Kinda specified. I know. I did know. we see it yesterday? I don't think we did. No, I don't think we did either. On either of the two. Maps. Look, it's Christmas Jacoby. Christmas who? Christmas Jacoby. I'm, I'm looking for Jacoby. In the top right. Attackers need to locate and defuse. I thought it was Blackbeard for a second. I was like, <laughs> I I'm so know. confused. I know I was playing with you. <laughs> All right. Either way. <laughs> As we <laughs> we started with the face, it is Jacoby. I, I just thought it was Blackbeard. Yeah, she's it. wearing a fake beard. Yeah. Did that really I throw you? That really you're, threw me you're off. You're like the <laughs> sort of person that would fall for Superman's disguise, aren't you? If someone puts on glasses, you're like, who's that? You're yeah. like a dog. You have yeah. no facial recognition no. beyond. I was so confused. I was, looking, I was like, <laughs> I was like looking at, at at the top left. I was like, that's Yana. So yeah, it's not that right. one. It's the top me. right. Okay, yeah. No, that threw me off. Yeah, I d I'm amazed. See, this is why there's no skins allowed in uh, competitive because uh -huh. people like me would just be thrown off. You would be thrown off. Yeah. Now I know entirely. I, I would call Blackbeard dead, and then the rest of my team would be there's no Blackbeard. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd have to sit and have a think about it. We start with BDS leaning in onto their defense here on the side of club. They're gonna see if they can try and get things rolling with this uh, steady sort of hold of the extension. As we sort of said, across most of the map, you feel the full stretch of it. You see if you can explore big portions of it. Obviously, the site is down all the way on the bottom, but look at this. On the top, you have Nikkei Fak trying to buy himself as much attention as possible. If he can take out a couple of drones and maybe even a player if he's feeling very lucky, things might start to put into his favor. I mean, that's it, right? You want to waste as much time as possible because they've seen it yesterday. I mean, they could get quite slow on their attacks every now and then. If you manage to slow that down even more, your defenses are just going to be holding up way better. A very cheeky angle here being held. Uses coming around the corner. Doesn't quite spot him. Drops down just in time. But that means they cannot actually try and pressure him for now. Likafak able to fall back. It's going to go for a bit of a run out, but misses the impact. It's just uh, some slight unfortunate series of events right there that makes sure uh, uh, eventually still gets the first kill with Rinchiro, but not as early as they want it. There it is, a long fight oh. and two Solotov did not let go. And he might even try and potentially find a third fight here to the Lems. Oh no, he's able to take it out there. I was going to wonder, I was going to finish that with does he know just how quickly this aggressive push is going to come through, but it seemed like he was more aware than what Solotov might have been. Now, the three versus three, a bit of damage and some control rested over the top two floors, but they still have destructive work to be done. They've lost some of their soft. 
but look at what they still have. The Sledgehammer can start to crack its way across. It's got the danger of two C4s to play against it. Sinella's going to start with a whole story above. Then you've still got Neo with most of the ex Kairos able to potentially get through the hatches that they want to, but the Wall of Pipes might prove a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, hatches should be able to uh, to be opened up relatively easy. You, uh, you do have to be careful for those C4s, but that's going to be about it. The thing is, dirt has been left soft. However, it's going to be a long walk for Nello to try and open that up. So I don't think we're actually going to be seeing too much of that. So double X is being used there to bait out any of the impacts. None seem to be coming out as there is none on the board, of course. That means the second set will be used. So the two hatches open up. Nella will lose his life though by Shiko. Uses using the EMP impact grenade to mask the drop of uh, the sound of his drop there. Might be a difference maker, but LM's too quick on that trigger. Takes down users, leaves it only up to Neo now. Yeah, it seemed like BDS had all the awareness of this. The push and the aggression, the wasted time just led to this. A scrappy end scenario. BDS still had two players buried back inside the site. They had pretty much control around the early game, although it was a bit scrappy. The mid game got it back and forth, and obviously the back of two kills shut down for the third. However, Eminem just could not quite find the end of the scene. Hey, Hap, who's that at the top right? It's, uh, it's Blackbeard. Oh! <laughs> no. no, I see. No. Incorrect. I was glancing over it previously, then then I missed it, but now I know I uh, cannot miss it anymore. Attackers need to locate and <laughs> Jim, anyway, you yes. know, we just continue. Uh, Are you excited <laughs> to play Snowball? Um, I am excited to get back to it, yes. Did you get weirdly competitive with it? I definitely did. Yeah. I was uh, stratting out with my teammates. Okay. Um, not quite formations, but people had their positions, you know? Yeah. Sort of goalkeeper. Did you have any calls on where the locations were? I mean, you, of course, like the middle bridge part, and, you know, yeah. the pits. And, and the pits, cool. Our castle and, and their castle. And so oh. it's, it w it wasn't it wasn't too advanced on our uh, on our calls there because I was mostly playing with randoms so you need to you need to be very descriptive in your calls. Hey, I hope everybody else's snowball experience is going good. It, is it would have been fun. cool to have us commentate it. I know I said this before and I'm sure they've done a wonderful job. I haven't actually played the new one. They did a wonderful job last year. However, imagine having if you're playing snowball at home, Tim calling your plays out <laughs> going crazy when you hit like a 2k with snowballs that would be it that'd be the dream that'd be the dream that'd be so cool you be soft if you're listening if there's another snowball next year just just you know you know some ideas out there you know it's fine us anyway jim 30 seconds have passed and bds they still have a bit of a stretch but it's a very different hole it's one way you sort of stretch across the top floor waste the time on the back end waste some of the utility drive and it's down to m, &M to see if they can break across it a long range play there with the gun six. They want to force out Bride's bandit tricking, but it's solid up underneath that gets the opener there. Inside kitchen, finds the back end of Renshiro, opens up some stretch and logistics, but look at this. A quick rotate round. They're going to see if they can try and rebuild against it. Lems playing the hyper aggressive game right now in that he is just looking for a fight. He played it on the previous round. He did it fantastically at the major they mm. took. And Ian Neo, he's a bit stuck waiting for some of the appearance of a support structure. Now, there's going to be two imp uh, EMP impacts they can use. However, Bride still has an extra uh, battery in his pocket. Needs to be juggling that one around. Well, LMs might be finding a grenade underneath. No, that's going right into the vault. As the impact EMPs are being used, the Selmas will be removed. However, the uh, the exothermic will blow up. So a breach has been made. And they will allow Eminem to put pressure onto the bathroom now and try and see if they can find Bride in a result. Yeah, perfect way of sort of demonstrating how you can take care of that. They didn't want to try and risk the pressure onto any utility that might be tucked in the corner. So instead, just burn the utility on the wall itself. One and one, you've got that to utilize, utilize it. Most of the walls here are ones where you're sort of getting them cracked open as they already have done. The calls come through. Bit of pressure here up the main stairs. Tyrant suffers as he just loops around the opening that was made a long time ago. Just saw the edge of a firefight, but it's Bride that pops up, gets one. Can't get the rest of the drone, but Shaiko, he suffers next from Nello on the breach and the breakthrough. They're inside the bathroom. They're out of the bathroom now, and he's looking for one more Bride, but it's the grenade from Tyrant that gets the connection. Lee Fak, he's going to see if he can get that long arm stretch with the Lems, getting some control back over the stair set. It's now a fight, but it's users on the back end of logistics that pinches the man. Two versus one, 30 seconds. Lee Fak's in a bit of a tricky situation that he's tucked on the equipment, but he cannot quite get users. He had all the awareness there. One apiece. Capri Fire there coming out from users, spotted out the legs, went for the head right after. 
I was going to say, Likafak in quite a good position in the gym, has the door barricaded off. He knows when I need to go for that plant. Just had to hope he was quicker on the trigger than the m, &M players, which wasn't the case. Managed to, uh, to take their first offensive round. Now back to bar stage. We're not headed to CCTV. And this has been a recurring theme we've had within uh, the European League. More and more teams are starting to opt out of going towards CCTV cash. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have to explain usually, but, you know, let's just toss it in there. It's just that, you know, that that site has been attacked over a thousand times uh, yeah. in, in Pro League. Everybody knows how to deal with it. And it's basically almost unwinnable if you're playing against an attacking team that knows exactly what they're doing. Yeah, that, that's the sort of baseline of it, really, is knowledge. Is of all the sites and all the gin joints in the whole world, it's got to be this one, Sam. It's got to be the one that you know the best. And it is probably, for a lot of people's money, the site that if you were to say what is the most default attack of a site that's known, CC, across yeah. all the maps, across all the comp maps, across maybe even some of the spicy out there maps. And, and let's talk about ranked, casual, unranked. Like the entire player yeah. base almost knows how to attack that site, which is why it's slowly starting to fall out of that popularity. Uh, popularity. You, you, you always see it as well. You always see yeah. the first rotate off is what's known. You have to play a bit unexpected. Talking of, look at that. Straight to the bubble on the back line. Solotov, he went for a long drive and was rewarded at the very end of that. The Flores gets some early work done on a bit of a pocket and a chance and some utility. Um, Mewdrum, I believe, was being placed there by Likafak, which is why Solotov had the opportunity to move through. He's doing more with the RC Terrors, creating rotations. This is exactly what we uh, we talked about with Flores being such a, you know, first as an operator, you can basically use him for intel, for removing gadgets, for removing players, creating rotation holes. He literally does everything. And LM's even said back in the day when he just was released that they believe Flores was the most powerful attacking operator in the game at that moment in time. Now, they've not really played it as much ever since, but, you know, Eminem is uh, not afraid to use it against BDS now by literally just tearing apart the entire defense that has been set up on that first floor. I mean, look at this, though. They only really have EFAC that's close in a position to swing directly. The other players have all got themselves propped up vertically. BDS is sort of watching from the top down, and now they're all up there. Every single member is in a position where they sort of say, OK, great, they can do as much as they Ooh. want. But we have this, the control. There's a quick swing round, the break there onto the bubble, I believe. Maybe another gone six that might have just popped into yeah. corner here from the line as the pressure comes through. They're going to see if they can go for something right under the smoke. Solotov, he's going to try and lock it out. Shaiko is above, and Nello, he's just going to hold F, and well, he gets it stuck. BDS, they take the drop, oh. and now he's going to see if he can just hold the corner. Do they know? Nello, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. What? <laughs> and look at Shaiko! <laughs> Even he doesn't truly really understand what happened. <laughs> this is a ninja plant into a ninja defense. Oh my that, god, that. that was all within about 20 seconds from start to finish, both plant and defuse. <laughs> wow, that is not often seen. Telestrator, please. That, that, that's all I'm going to be saying to the analyst back in uh, the green room. But what happened there is, you know, full top four controls being held by BDS. We all know how important it is for bar and stage, but you still need some verticality. That's what was lacking and allowed Eminem to go for the plant eventually in that smoke. But that same smoke and explosives going off at other places of the map masked the sound of Shaiko dropping and going for that defuse. They were unable to hear that sound uh, prompt go through. And that is just an instant win coming in. Even though Eminem, they set it up quite well. Took care of a lot of the utility, realized BDS is all upstairs, so all you need to do is put the line out onto the highway, watching through that hatch on construction. The plant should be safe at that time. And it was, it, it definitely was. But then everybody pulled a bit too far away. No one actually had an eye on that diffuser and the sound cues did not really prove trustworthy there. Did the explosions <laughs> again going off. Did they? <laughs> well, again, explosions were happening. No, there so was a lot going on, sure. But, like... I it's mean, also, like, two meters away it from it. Just, so just <laughs> the pace of that was comedy gold. All right. We loop back around. BDS. They find themselves one round ahead. 
on the rotation in the split. And it's probably one that Eminem might beat themselves up about a little bit later. But sometimes you take a chance. Sometimes the chance is taken against you. They start as they did before with this clear over the top. We remember it got quite scrappy before things really started to cook together. And even then, it was on the back of a double kill that Eminem were able to pull themselves towards. So they've gone with a slightly different approach in the Tyrant. He's already tucked himself into Garage. They're getting a lot of pressure here onto the mid floor and they're letting only a couple of players go for the clear and the push on the top. Making sure there's not too many players out there. You, they know that they need to be uh, need to be moving down as well. So you don't want to be uh, falling into the trap of having everybody out at different places. Just let the drones do the work, right? Like let the drones clear everything out, have one or two players behind it to or we'll follow up in case there is someone out there and then, you know, with 90 seconds left on the clock, they should be able to start opening up. However, Likafak has decided to hide himself near the strip club. And as these hatches are going to be opening up, he has the luxury to just wait. And I think that's exactly what he's going to be doing as he slowly creeps back towards the battlefield. There is a camera hidden inside that jukebox. That is going to be crucial for this flank to come through. They know exactly where these players are going to be at. Leak in fact, he could just get two kills for free here. I mean, what a great place for a camera that expect to see this in your games at home, people. Because it's about to be... Oh my god. Devastating. There's one, there's no two, way. and there's Likefax straight out of there, and they have no idea the heist of a century has just been pulled against them. 45 seconds. He's back in the club, sitting alone in the VIP, and he's waiting for somebody to see if he can, I guess, bring them some pressure. This is so smart. He opens it up with the impact, but he's not actually challenging it. He's wanting them to come to him. He's challenging them, like, come and get and me. I don't need pinged. to go. It's still pinged. I know mean, exactly where they are. This camera is going to be stolen. There's no two ways about <laughs> it, it. This camera is going to be in everybody's game from this point onwards if Falk's on the board because of just how much distraction. There's 15 seconds and they're hunting a player inside strip because they have no other choice. There's oh, four. Lick a fact. Is he going to end this round on an ace? It's eight seconds. And at this point, I think it's only if Neo tries to find the fight, he's going to pull himself back. He's not going to give him that kind of gift this early in the holidays. But well I mean, what a play. That, that is a perfect Valkyrie camera out there. It is also perfect trigger discipline from Leak Effect, first of all. And the timeout is being requested by Eminem after that one because what we've just seen is a round where Shiko just like steals it. You know, he's okay, smoke, that's fine, I'll defuse. And after that, Leak Effect, who uh, is dubbed the new GOAT by Fresh and also had an amazing rookie stage, just gets a quad kill like that backed on his own information that he's gathering. And Eminem, they need, uh, need to have a little bit of a chat because, well, that isn't going too great so far. They want to get themselves a second and maybe even a third round on the attack to find themselves in a fighting position for the second half. But for now, <laughs> that, is, that is not looking like that is going to be happening. Yeah, that, that's, that's a way of putting it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of built itself into a situation here where i mean you have to give credit to bds before i say anything else the, you play, do, yes. the plays that they're putting together are really well put together however there's also a big element of pluckiness about it the ninja diffuse into the back there of one sneaky camera it's like one very great thing is falling into place and they haven't quite been able to find the break against it mm-hmm Whereas Eminem, you know, they're doing these structured takes. Okay, they're on attack. That's sort of more their job. It gives you more of a direction and that you've got to play more into the game. But at the same time, I mean, it's just, it must be frustrating for Eminem that they're on the back and, you know, they don't know about that camera. They don't know how things went wrong. They just know it did. And it felt a bit too easy. Now, if you haven't seen, we are headed into a re-host there's a graphical bug on the screens for Eminem. So we're just quickly getting that sorted out, and then we're getting back into the game. So you might be wondering, uh, no, Coach is not allowed to talk to the players right now. He just had his 45 seconds. This is just going to be a timeout for the players here whilst they are rejoining the server. We'll allow them to continue discussing on what was going wrong, or just like Shaiko, he's just going to be uh, checking the TL, you know. <laughs> See, seeing what if the if the if the ninja diffuse has been posted yet, so he uh, can type a little haha with that. Haha, <laughs> lol. <laughs> 
but then in a French accent, of course. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we have to say Eminem in that round where they attacked Bar Stage, they looked under control. They they managed to take what was necessary. They got rid of the utility that needed to be cleared out. They got the plant down. Up until that point, everything was perfect. They had the cover. They knew exactly what it needed to be. And then it all fell apart by Shaiko next to the door frame, diffusing. And I'm not sure if they heard one or two of those ticks and then didn't hear the others due to other sound cues coming through, like the explosions, the impact grenades that were being tossed in by the defense. And that's why they didn't peek, or it was something else. Again, here, Likifak. And it was all telegraphed. I mean, it's, it was it's beautiful. It was just great team coordination. He knew exactly when they were going for the swing. He had the calls. He had that opener, as he said, to sort of draw the ire and attention away. And, you know, Eminem, they sort of find themselves in a situation where they maybe expected Jim. Obviously, you could see a massive uh -huh. repick that comes across the board. Grim was originally there, but I don't know if that was just a timeout there, as it can somehow happen at the minute. Could be. Um, but Monty is uh, going to be a very, very signature pick for a clear like this. This is Eminem not wanting to deal with any, like, any weird strategies being tossed at them at BDS. What they're going to do is get Monty in Garage, just pushing them up the rafters. You're going to be clearing out those players without any issue. That is going to be that goal. Then you have Garage under control. We talked about how this is, like, one of the most known sites to attack. That's one of the steps. You need garage control. But the first is to open up the breach that we're currently looking at. Solotov ready to wait. Neo is able to uh, to put that exothermic down at any given moment. But they need users there as well. You do not want to go for just a single breach at that point. Unless you know that there is going to be no active bandit. Now, bandit is not on the board. So they will not know until they've droned it out. And I guess that's just what they're waiting for right now. As you see users on that drone just gaining some ground. And instantly the opening comes afterwards. So they're acting quickly on their information. Well, there it is. The break comes across the wall that always falls. You can see, as I said, the Monty replacing the door, and the door gets smashed out. So they can sort of rotate their way back around. The Azami can give themselves the structure if they want it to try and survive for as long as possible. The pressure's going to come in underneath as well. They're going to see if they can draw it across. You can see Tyrant, he's making a bit of a motion. And Trying to upset the ocean, but with those ADSs, with the Azami in, with Renshiro potentially in a position to... Ooh, just oh, just gets the catch at the end there. Neo caught out by the wide swing. They step in, and Nello might find themselves isolated. Builds the oh. wall behind him. Yeah. Very clever play. Psycho gets a double in the meantime. They pop out the door. They're somehow able to get one more. <laughs> And that was just, okay, for what I called in previous rounds as those little moments. The uh, Azami to block the Monty. The it's, it's, it's great. It's brilliant. It's just fun siege to watch. It's the siege that you want to watch from the reigning major champions. They're also the reigning European League champions. They, they are looking to re-guild their, uh, their throne in the trailer. And of course, get the trophy as well. And again, we go for a quick break as it's 144 BDS. Um, need to uh, get that all sorted. And we just wait. But uh, what you mentioned, like, first of all, like being in that spot underneath the steps, you can see underneath the barricade, you see the the the, um, the feet coming through. You get feet, that kill. Yep. All right, that that's great. I mean, that happens. Um, Sometimes you need you need to you need to be able to deal with that. Monty pushing in and instantly the keeper barrier coming out. Like you you're stuck with us now. A teammate needs to come and help you. And as soon as he opens up the keeper barricade, someone runs out of the breach to instantly take the fight back to them. Like that's just that coordination of BDS and just showing the world that they know every in and out it's of Clubhouse. It, I mean it's it's just well put together siege. It's it is. Just, it's just siege that as I said, it, it feels cool it feels calm it feels i'm not going to say perfect because i think that's a very rare word that you should use it's definitely not perfect i mean plants against them yeah yeah, yeah but it's got this sort of level of sheen to it that you want to see from a team because and this is going to be one of the most like understated worst things 
okay, you've won a major, but go win a side. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but that's the thing. And they need that level of sheen. That's the yeah. difference maker. And the fact that they're sort of displaying it at this point, they've obviously got as much time after this as any team heading into SI to mm. get things pieced together. Eminem, they're on the wrong side of this. And that's just the matter of the fact. As I said, they've had good team play. They've had good moments. You can see the ideas coming together. And they're starting with the brace on attack on club, where those moments have to come together. But one stick through the spokes can stop the whole cart. And that is sort of what they're struggling with right now. The thing is as well, though, right? Like, we all expect BDS to take Clubhouse. It, that's just almost a given. You see BDS and Clubhouse, it's like, okay, that, that one is going to be won by BDS. That, that's almost always how you think about it. Eminem, they will notice. Um, they, you know, they bend their maps, had to go to Clubhouse. The other two maps will suit them a bit more against BDS, I think, than uh, than Clubhouse does. So to some extent, it's uh, it's survival. Try and uh, make sure you do not get beaten too hard. Make sure that the mental stays up. Something, for example, uh, we saw with the Dunlimited against Ten Star, where the first loss came in, and Ten like Ten Star wasn't able to fight back against Dunlimited anymore. Right afterwards, that's something they need to prevent from happening. And of course, Eminem, they've gone to majors. That they have been playing in the European League now for a bit, so they have that experience to go with it. They have that resilience as well. But still, you don't want to be beaten like, let's say, 7-1, for example, uh, on Clubhouse. Because, again, it is a map of basics. It is a map that BDS often wins, but it doesn't mean he never gotten close. And as we wait until we get going again... Back in in a moment. Back in in just a couple of seconds or minutes. Don't know. I mean, it, w it was a sort of perfect response there from BDS as well. It, they're a team that I actually really like how they respond to a timeout call by another team is, for me, they try and break expectation. And it's, yeah. you know, it's it's a harder thing to, I guess, call on a map like Club where you will often see all four sites picked and utilized. But they like to sort of go, they've called a timeout. They want to talk about the round ahead let's turn what we're doing on the head. If there's a rhythm, regardless of what it is, if you look at any of the times that a team takes a timeout against BDS, very, very often, you'll see them pick a offsite, or you'll see them pick a different site to what's expected on what might be open and what might not be open. Uh -huh. And I think that's always something that I've quite liked about them here. They get one more swing round on bar where a fate was cruelly decided by two yeah. very sneaky players. The BDS surely is going to be finding themselves some adaptations as well. They know they basically dodged a bullet with, with that Ninja Diffuse coming in, right? Like, they also know that that round probably would have been M&M's if they acted on uh, Shaka going for that Diffuse. I mean, the early round was all M&M's. They were able to open up whatever they needed to get opened up. They got the plan down. Normally, when you have five players still left alive at that moment, that should be a round win, but not the case this time. Uh, but surely BDS is going to be playing a bit more reserved now, a bit more actually on the side itself. At least I hope so. To stop that from happening. And make sure that they bring the aggression there where needed in time. Now there's no Flores this time on Eminem's side, so they're going to have to get rid of utility in a different way. That means Bride has uh, a bit more free reign with his cameras. Able to take out drones, for example. So has had them then. Yeah, it's obviously more of a familiar game because the removal of Solus is something where, you know, you're sort of like, ah, but at the same time, it's still early days for Solus, especially as it is. there's an importance to this game that varies with the importance of where we might have seen her. We saw her played a fair bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mixed success across the whole day, I think it's fair to say, because it's it's early. And you're not seeing league play. You're not seeing Renshiro this round either. Tyrant very quick into construction. Lems isn't too far away. There's a player either side of him, though. That's the sort of danger. When you're between this, uh, Shaiko and an Lems place, how do you act? For now, Tyrant's going to sit and wait for a call. Now, construction is very important to hold on to because it will enable a plan to happen. And I think that's what the rest of Eminem is starting to work around to now. However, Tyranny could be double swung at any given moment because they know he's out here. 
As Bandit gets very close, as Shaiko to run past, but surely the player on the bedroom side should be going for a bit of a swing now. No, Shaiko again going through, but he falls eventually, and Alem's not there to help his teammate. It's going to be meaning that BDS is now two men down. Yeah, different approach here over the side, and you wonder if this was the team talk direction that they wanted to have. Expecting this to be the side, the swing comes across. There it is, free day on the door, and Alem's from the logistics side, and they're able to at least take care of Tyrant, and maybe try and bite back some of this verticality. However, with just under a minute left, and Nello gonna see if he can try and plant the kit slightly deeper, a slightly different position. Alem's yeah. finds Nello, though, and... As you said it, Warden had the cover on the smoke. He's looking for the fight. Cannot quite find it. Users gets the angle. And Leak Effect gets one back on the stairs. The two versus two. The Maestro Cam's doing a bit of damage and work. Maybe some attention or a drone that was caught out, but it wasn't done to the player. Maybe, maybe just a statement piece of saying 30 seconds. What are you going to do? The warden glasses activate there as the smokes came through. Good adaptation, but the diffuser will be recovered. They can see, though, but they bash that camera, so that information has been taken out. Lots of damage done, though, from above. Now you have Leak Effect coming up from behind as well. As the camp starts up, it gets the injury onto users. It's a one and two now, with 12 seconds on the board and the diffuser down. So of needs to make a guess. He guesses wrong. Leak Effect gets that final two kills, and that's BDS with yet another round on the board. Oh, the camera is only blind for the time the doors are shut and there was a bit of scrap damage that was done on the collection of the kit obviously would have aided in what was the down there from the maestro bubble five to one bds find themselves peeling further and further away here on this the opening half and now they've got to see if they can try and just push it over the edge eminem they obviously have used their timeout they've only got the road ahead to see if they can try and root something but it has been a very rocky road to get here for them. So far, yes, uh, definitely has been. So again, this map is a bit of survival, making sure that you have the opportunity to strike back in the next two, take it with that 2-1 victory. I'm not saying Eminem has lost already. However, BDS is one of those teams where they rarely lose clubhouse, and Eminem are fully aware of it. They're truly trying to test BDS, but BDS is too strong so far. But the attacks are coming through, and they're defending the basement. That is a difficult side to get through. You need to often rely on these hatches, and if a M&M roamer goes unseen, we might just get a bit of a repeat of what we saw Likifak do earlier on. So BDS, they need to make sure they drone everything very carefully before they start approaching that site, but again, not lose too much time in the process. All right, Eminem, as I said, the mantle and the pressure of being the pushers is something that you had in the first half. Now it's been taken over. The baton's been handed, and BDS have a lot of room for error here. The start is going to be a quick check with the Nook. They're still getting some breach over the top, but there's not really anyone from Eminem close. Tyrant is the only loose thread, playing himself around the brick stairs on the far end, waiting for anything a bit closer, but... They're not going to find him as of yet as they shape themselves up around blue. Efac's going to be the one that sort of steps his way towards it. But he's hot droned ahead and he's playing himself in the element of surprise. Ooh, he might be seeing his army now. That is going to be the instant response from Leaker Factor come through clinical as they take down Tyron. And that is going to be an opening kill. Very important here for BDS. I think Eminem, they wanted to, you know, make something happen, at least waste some time, get that first kill. But instead, they lose out on it. That means BDS now have two minutes left to do all the prep work they need and instantly go back towards the side afterwards to find a plant, potentially. So, you know, Eminem, they need to fight back now. They need to go aggressive as BDS is going to be opening up. You cannot afford to give them any space. As soon as they start dropping motorcycle, as soon as they are on the same horizontal level as you, that is when you're going to be struggling. Well, both hatches pop off in a cacophony of danger. The third for good measure here is BDS are doing a lot of work with a lot of pace. Eminem, they can only sort of sit and wait and feel the hatches batten and break against the top of them as they start to suffer the wrong end of it. Neo, he's keeping an eye and a watch down oil and the swing of blue. Shaiko is going to be the first to get in close here on the opposite side, and the vector can be a laser in this sort of engagement, so they pull themselves back, but Pipes has fallen. Likefak, he's tucked himself in, Ranchira is the one that gets the kill on the end of it, and they're still sort of holding on and trying to piece together just where the push is. They've entirely had to leave Armory as a sight and a side. They've pulled themselves out of it. The top isn't safe for them, but there it is. Look down, Nello's able to get one, slips his way back round. 40 seconds, and they find one off of the end of it, but 
They're still causing so much damage here. And another the mirror window that's inside blue, so they cannot directly push that. They need some distractions so they can drop through the hatch and instantly try and challenge that player. That's what Shaiko's waiting for. Bride and Leak Effect now looking to go in. A little wall bang damage going through into users. They're hoping to execute upon it. But Shiro gets one. Leak Effect follows up. It's only up to Neo now on that mirror as the plant's going down. A beautiful hatch shot onto the main stairs, but Shaiko above on the hatch will shut him down. And that means BDS now on map point already. After their very first attack, that's the basement taken care of. And I just have to say, I liked what Shaika did there earlier on. He ran inside blue, saw the mirror, and he's like, nope, <laughs> we're, not, we're not pushing through here. I'm going to be holding this from above. We'll let the execute happen elsewhere, near triple wall. And it's exactly what they did. They pushed through, and they managed to find a success. And that is the strength of BDS. When they haven't quite opened up everything they need to open up, they just pull a trigger, and it works out for them. Attackers need to locate and defuse so you know how we were talking about this might run the risk of being another two map affair. Yeah, it could, could definitely do. It almost has to be the opposite of the game that we had earlier on today, where the first map was neck and neck, and the second was a bit of a bit of a wash. It was a bit of a blowout. Bit of a blowout. Say, yes. Here we maybe find ourselves on the other end of that. It's down now. M and M to have a flawless rest of this game, pretty much. If they want to... Mm -hmm. Well, if they want to get to OT, they've got a flawless the rest of this half. If they want to get to the end of the game, there's only one other round that can be dropped across the entirety. So at this point, it is do or die. And then you know that you're leading in, obviously, to your map pick next. But it's theme and you're starting on attack. Yeah, that's why I was saying to you earlier on, like, this could be another 2-0 coming through if, uh, if BDS handle Clubhouse quickly. Oh is definitely something they're trying to do right now. Barricade and uh, camera taken out, instantly putting up the pressure onto the main stairs as well. They are aware of the bomb site. They're instantly trying to cut down some of the rotations defenders might go for. But if you take a look at your right hand side of the screen, you see that Ying. You cannot help but think there's going to be at least some form of aggression coming through. That could either be around um, the, 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 the the construction area where they try and instantly push through. It could be through any of the hatch drop downs into the direct side, or maybe even bathroom where the mirror windows are located. Just so many places you can use these candelas and then try and find yourself with some extra success. Now the important walls that start to get popped open are these, the conjoinment of construction. We talked about how it is a bit of a big play space when you're trying to separate this top floor, regardless of whether you're going for the take and the plant on the top floor or the play below, either way. It comes with a lot of attention, comes with a lot of focus. The drones and the blinds come off the opposite side. Solotov, he's looking to see if he can maybe get a fight on the back of it, but you can see that they're still droning. The Ying has no immediate rush. It's something BDS can do as they know when to put the pressure on, know when to pull it slightly off. Neo, talking of, he's trying to find the right little pocket of pressure to get a swing into it, but he needs something else. There's a grenade that's about to roll here close, not close enough, and Alems is actually the first to find one. There it is, the swing round, the big breach, and look at what is suddenly free. They've been forced off the side. The pressure onto logistics, and Bride finds Tyrant, the start of what is turning into the end. And user stops the sort of and users suddenly find ones in and amongst the mix. Retake an important bit of territory. Alems swings on the top of the brick stairs. Solotov now all that's left. Gets a great connection and has the yellow pings on that final player. Smokes himself one cover in a rotation. There's a bulletproof that's giving some of the game away. He's got the mirror window offering himself some support as well. He's forcing the fight to happen in a bit of territory where he has all the intel or he's forcing Shaiko, who's gonna have oh. and somehow take the trade. Eminem get the round. I was about to say gonna have to take the fight at less health if he had a bit more. That might have been all she wrote. That, that would have been it. But due to the tiebreaker rules inside of a game, defense always wins a trade situation unless that diffuser is planted. So due to the fact that that wasn't the case, Eminem live another round. A beautiful clutch to come through to provide themselves a bit of an extra lifeline. But that was way too close for comfort there. That was a trade. And, you know, maybe BDS a little bit, you know, annoyed by that, but... It's going to be all it is, just a slight annoyance that they haven't been able to lock it off yet. Eminem going back towards the basement, though, hoping to uh, hold on to it this time. No mirror on the board, as it has been uh, dealt with quite well by BDS. 
choosing to go for different options. You see the Goyo on users, for example. It's going to be uh, able to put some fire down in that room as soon as the pressure gets a bit too hot. So you see it onto uh, you know, some of the immediate entrance points that BDS would like to take, possibly, just to make sure that that will uh, be slowed down ever so slightly. So it seems like a quite heavy row. Mozzie, Vigil, Mute, all up on that top floor. They're hoping to waste some time of BDS here, but, you know, the, the thing is, they're four rounds ahead. If they realize this, might just go straight for sight. I mean, I said they sort of had to be flawless, and <laughs> you physically could not get closer. Yeah, could not get closer. Could not that. get closer. <laughs> Two around going away from you than what we've just seen. Eminem by the skin on the skin of their teeth. Keep themselves in this map. Shaiko takes a fair chunk of damage there as he's caught in the fire on the breach and the breakthrough. Tyrant. I mean, he's playing with those bars. Does he know how close they are? Just on the other side, it's a very aggressive position. They seem to have some awareness. Bride wants no. to swing at the same time as the pressure. The calls come together. There's the drone confirmation, and there is the right time for Tyrant to leave. Trying to fall back here, but Shaka already in quite deep. Look effect will fight users. And you see that these rotations back towards the actual site are being covered off a BDS member. So what they've done is basically created an MM sandwich here with some down on the side, some up top, and they are gonna be right in between, but they are actually the ones successful. Leak effect finds a second kill. Nitro Cell used in the attempt of potentially taking someone out onto rafters, but no one's out there. And now you have one person on the side and two still left up top. BDS, they might just call to go for the side directly and overwhelm that one person. I mean, there's another connection there, LMs. He's been so consistent throughout this showing so far, but to be fair, who from BDS hasn't? They've been able to at least find some of the space back down to the site, but now they're coming into the back of a fight. A flawless to end what has been a dominating display here on Club. They really took the idea that this is our map and rode it all the way to the bank, 7-2-2. Two, two. And m and they're gonna have to have a heck of a team talk. Yeah, they're definitely gonna have to have a, a bit of a chat there to make sure they are going to be right back into the mental for that second game, because again, it's gonna be a rough start for them. They will be starting off on the attack on Theme Park. It's not going to be ideal being a map down, but it is not over yet. There's still a lot to fight for here. I'm sure Eminem want to go all in. Not being ideal is a bit of an understatement. I'm trying to stay positive. To the map that we just saw, no. That was one of those ones where you've got to take the biggest mental reset afterwards. Yes. And you have to look towards your pick. And you have to sort of say, that was theirs. This is ours. Let's prove it in the same way. But before we get there, we have a break and our desk. Welcome back, friends. Hello, hello, hello. BDS, make it real quick on Clubhouse 72. Who would have thought that that would happen? Literally everybody in the world. What a surprise. Except for Eminem for some goddamn reason. But so how did BDS take this? I mean, if you look at the attacks on the side of Eminem and the attacks of BDS, it's a very big difference. Eminem let BDS get away with quite a few things on their attack, we could say. I'm talking a Velchem in bar, in a jukebox, and then 
Leaky fact flanking from strip club where they're not aware of this. There's literally someone walking right behind the thermite and he's not aware of it. The plant where Shiko drops from construction and goes for the ninja defuse where you could blame it on the fact that there's a C4 going off probably at the same time as a tick of the plant. You get the tinnitus from that. But it's very unfortunate that BDS get away with these types of things. It could have been a 7-1, by the way, if you look at that, because... True. Eminem won one round off of a trade where they won it because they were on defense. They almost got Brazil. Nearly a 7-1. Yeah. The joke's not overused, Milos, thankfully. Uh, but uh, the player that's not overused is the, the rookie, Efak. Again, MVP. The GOAT, as you like to call him. It's what he does. I mean... He's so good. Uh, there's only so much you can say about Efak, but there's also only so much you can say about taking BDS to Clubhouse. I'm kind of like a bit speechless of it. All right. It's like... We, I don't know why. We can move to map two at, at this I point. Honestly, we, we we definitely should. Sorry, Jack, if you wanted to say something, but <laughs> I was I, I you have I a just, clip. I wanted to talk about the ninja diffuse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. That was a really cool one. A ninja ninja plant and then a ninja diffuse. Uh, that was a good. Have start. we got the clip of it? Yeah, we do. Go. I'm bring it up. So here's what I thought about the plant. Now, there's a reason that Nello particularly is playing gridlock. It is not to deny any plant any flanks whatsoever. It is because the sound of the gridlock track stingers are so loud, basically. And that's what enables Nello to get the plant down. You take the smokes down, you throw the gridlock stingers, the track stingers out, the sound covers the plant, of the sound, basically. Therefore, the plant goes down. Shaiko, completely above, completely unaware of that sound. When the plant goes down and Shaiko drops, obviously the ninja diffuse goes off. And haha, it's funny. I think it's the first time we've ever seen a ninja diffuse in Siege before. What undoes Eminem is two things. One, Nello throws the track stingers. Watch, watch on the left-hand side of your screen where Shaiko gets on this. The track stinger gets thrown now. So Nello covers his own sound of the diffuse going down, and then the C4 goes off, and that is just simply what has enabled uh, this ninja diffuse to happen. It's the two sound cues, and particularly one that Eminem intended to use, has actually worked against them. And it was genius from Shaiko. I have no idea how he's got away with it, but he did. I mean, he keeps getting away with it. It's incredible. He's been getting away with it forever in a pro play, and here he is now, champion, major champion. So there we go. A major champion, sneaky diffuse. It's beautiful. They countered one another without even knowing it. It's beautiful. Anyways, moving on to our next map, because uh, we just got to throw Clubhouse by the wayside. It never happened, at least if Eminem are concerned. And now we go to Theme Park. Now, luckily, both of these teams played the map yesterday and had the exact same result. So how does that go, Tristan? I think that's Skyscraper. They played yesterday, had the same result. Oh, yeah. Yo, what am I talking about? <laughs> it's it's, it's a difficult day for me. It's just a really difficult day for me. Retirement Colin. They want him back by eight. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's going to be a nice quick 2-0. <laughs> Eminem have been told. They're on yeah. payroll. They're on Milos payroll. <laughs> I am so old. <laughs> <laughs> like Milos and malfunction. I like how M is laughing <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> Eminem. <laughs> okay, server. But anyway, theme, theme park, park. A map that both teams are good at. A, a map that has preference for both teams, especially Eminem. We spoke about earlier in the Challenger League game. It's one of those maps where they kind of. I know they really like to take the Monty. I know they like those sort of crutch operators Ying, Monty, Lion, Dokubi. They won't be afraid to use it. They're going to use it. It's going to be interesting to see which aspect of that the BDS chooses to ban or if they just mm -hmm. lean into that themselves. Eminem have got a much better chance with theme purely just because of the map. But again, it's BDS. They're good at it. I think the thing for BDS is obviously it's going to be the fighting at the borders, right? Fighting at the top cache, top dragon balcony, those kind of areas and the, the cafe side for the top floor. And that's how theme park plays out in most scenarios. Whoever wins that initial tussle around the territory, the first port call of the map, tends to win the round, whether that be the attack or whether the defenders hold on to it. So, But yeah, I think it's certainly for Eminem. Clubhouse is very clearly not their map. It was a permaban for them for a long time. For it to theme park, and I think they do have a better chance on that. And if we're talking about attacks on Theme Park, well, if you look at Eminem, it is one of their best attacking maps where they win about 64% of their attacks. Also one of their better defensive maps. You can say it might be one of their best ones, except if you take Shelley out. But obviously, if BDS have a big map pool, they can just ban Shelley. For BDS, they have played them up against Liquid in the Grand Finals, and they then won all their attacks. So that's also a very promising sign for them. Okay, well, we're going to have a bit more time than we expected uh, to get the lobby all together for map number two. But... Look, if you're Eminem, you definitely don't want this to be a quick 2-0, right? You also want to, you know, put a couple more rounds on the board. 
It think. might be why they're delaying the game starting, to be fair. Maybe they know something that we don't. Maybe they know it's going to be a 7-0. It's, it's actually not bad, but it's more like a technical thing. Okay. Sure. It, well, get your hopes up. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> what what should be Eminem, what should they be doing now? Because, Jack, I don't mean this as like a disparaging thing, but a couple of years ago when, you know, you coached Chaos. Right. Oh, this, I got really no, 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 no. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, everyone's in for this. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, no, rolling. I'm 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 being very, like, you know, realistic about it because I love to hear things from Jack. I, I, I'm ready. <laughs> I love his voice. Help. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jack, you used to say that whenever you play against BDS, you can prepare forever, but when you're actually in the server against them, there's your preparation will mean nothing. Yeah, they're very good at... BDS are a very good and, you know, experienced team at having seen everything against them, basically. They will do very similar things. They'll keep it very simple and do very similar things. And teams will try and counter them. But BDS have seen every way of being countered, know how to deal with it themselves. And I think that's what always what made BDS good. I think now that they've added League Fact as well, they now have that dimension of just being able to do something different. At least one player just doing something different as well. And that's what makes them so good. Um, and I think Theme Park, you know, they're... It's not one that was always in the BDS locker. They used to suck at it. There's they no did. two ways around it. They lost it against Chaos. Yeah, and then Alem said, look, we took too many Ls, including the one against Chaos. I think that was the real trigger. Yep. And like, okay, this is the time for us to actually practice the map. They practiced it for three weeks. They come back, you know, four weeks later, we're saying, oh, are they going to suck at it again? They go up and smash whoever they played against. So... You know, going in one month from Shaiko tweeting about Theme Park and complaining about it, that it's now in the rotation, to actually, we're pretty good at it now. It's well, pretty impressive. It shows that progression of the team as well, right? Yeah. Theme Park was a permanent ban. Villa was a permanent ban of BDS for the longest time. And now we're looking at them as major champions playing, what, pretty much eight maps, maybe nine, depending on their day, whether they want to include Shallow or not, and how they're feeling. And I think that's a really good progression for a team. And that's what I say. They have they have continued to grow, even though... You know, the last year before Yunchping was not the best. I also think, in a way, it's somewhat of a credit to how the game is developed, to be completely honest with you. I think people just know now, in general, how to play maps like Theme Park. But then also, you have the option to take things like EMPs. You have the option of playing, like, 1.5s. I think back when they complained about the map, we might have still had ACOGs back then, to yeah. be honest. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just one of those things. The game is developed. There's more ways to play maps. Maybe it's just naturally sort of slid over to being something that they like. Um, just look at the operator bands as well going into mm -hmm. theme park. Eminem Ben Mav and Cade and BDS Ben Thatcher and Solis. Um probably expecting some switches in that, considering the few things that Eminem or sorry, BDS got away with had to do with some information that they had as well. What would be swapped? I mean a Velk Ben, for example, just you know, denying a little bit of the information on defense that BDS played so well of just in that game. Or the Maestro, for example. Yeah, it was hard to see a Maestro Ben. It feels like, oh my god, is this you know, late 2018, early 2019 again, what's going on? We had a Maestro ban yesterday. Yeah, that's we what did. I'm saying. We did have one that's yesterday. literally what I just mentioned. Yeah. You're talking about me in the retirement home? Tristan? Oh, I was oh, I was encouraging Wake you. up, I, Samurai. I was making sure that you were correct about something. I, I wanted to build you back up. Uh, but yeah, I think information denial on, on club, uh, sorry, on theme for a ban would be good. We saw it in the Challenger League games. Well, we thought we might actually see that, but we didn't. We saw a mirror ban instead, and then not a single attack was won by the team that decided to ban mirror because they were playing against a Valkyrie, a Pulse, a Mozzie, every single round. Mm -hmm. But still, yeah, I think information denial is probably a good way to go here for BDS. Yeah, I think we also didn't mention the Azami. We saw the Solus Mirror ban in this sure. CL game. That leaves Valkyrie, like you say, Pulse. Azami is always open. You're always going to have these things. I think Theme Park, it depends which way a team is happy to crutch to. Are you happy to crutch to a Solus? Are you happy to crutch to sit behind a Mirror window? Or are you happy to crutch onto a Valkyrie or an Azami? Because... You're going to have some of them in play, at least. And I just think one thing about Theme Park is Eminem have got this reputation now as being known as a team that throws a lot of rounds. Theme Park is... Uh, <laughs> like well, both no, of their phases. Like, you know, let's be honest. Fresh is an expert on having a team that throws rounds, in fact. That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry, I watched stage three of Rogue. There are only four <laughs> points from top. I, I don't think he got four points. <laughs> I did. Fair. We drew about what? 17 times, mate. That's true. <laughs> six, six. Anyway, yeah. uh, what I meant by throws around was like throw 5v1s, 4v1s. Theme Park, uh, where was it? Was it Berlin? Where they threw a 5v1 Fury, on yeah. Theme Park against Fury, mm. against Fancy. And then also in EUL stage 3, they threw a 4, I want to say a 4v1. Yeah, 4v1s uh, always. 
on yep. Navi. So, you know, they have a bit of a tainted history with throwing rounds on theme park. And even though it's a rarity for it to happen, it still gets in your head when everybody talks about it. Because, of course, it's going to be the talk of the town for the 10 minutes where it's relevant. Wasn't one of those 4 v ones or 5 v ones that was played against Eminem also awarded for eSports Player of the Month or of the Year or something? So, I mean, That'd if cool, anyone right. starts playing it, uh, starts talking about it, must hurt your mental. I assume um, not on Eminem's side. Probably <laughs> the team that played against them. Yeah, sorry, that's what I mean. Like the, the five it should be a new award. We should have the throw of the month. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> was it throw of the month? Yeah, we should do a throw of the month. Actually, Rogue got yeah. a few of them, didn't they? Yeah, it'd be good. That'd be <laughs> nice to win something again. <laughs> well, at least Rogue made it to EOL finals one way or the other. <laughs> Anyways, th this is who he is, by the way, for those that are asking in the chat. Who is this guy with the glasses? It's Say This. He's the, I guess, coach, manager, whatever you want to call him from Rogue. What do you actually do with it? Anything. What does Meepy do on the team? Waterboy. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah, I mean, <laughs> even Ant's getting involved in I mean, Berlin <laughs> was... Anyways, uh, thank you very much, my friends. It is time for us for potentially our last map of the series. Maybe it's up to Eminem to take us to map three. Will they do that or not? We'll have to see in-game. Back to our beauties on the caster's desk. Tap Eminem. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Milaj, and thank you. Uh, welcome back to the caster yeah. desk where we actually do not try and humiliate each other. I... Actively. Have Every single given possibility. Wonderful, again. happy holidays. Yeah, it's, it's just holidays. like a brawl over there. I don't know what's happening. It's like a bell real. I was going to say, before <laughs> the throw, I was thinking, I'm going to say that I feel bad for Anne, and then she got involved at the end as well. Yeah. So I don't feel bad for any no. of them. <laughs> Shall we just get in the game? <laughs> yeah, we'll get into this. Uh, map two. Maybe of two, maybe of three. And it's not Eminem to prove anything because... Oh, social Boy, play. howdy! That first map sure was... Powerful. That's a warm up. That's what we call that, Emmy. Just, uh, just, just getting up to speed. I think it's also called brutal demolition. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, uh, on BDS aside. But I mean, okay, we. I say brutal. It was. No, it was brutal. Yeah, but it was quite calm and collected. It, yeah, it, was, it, it was, wasn't like the most unbelievable, like no holds barred. They're taking control of all the map and Eminem. Calculated brutalism. That's yeah, they just they did what they needed to do, when they needed to do it, whether it was a minor thing, whether it was something small or yeah. huge, it was what was needed. They played the rounds ahead of them. And sure, there's a bit of a back and forth in terms of pacing, but they were never too inherently or sort of deliberately stressed by it. Different bands already coming through. Ace, of course, to uh, to force uh, the team to play more towards a thermite. There's a lot of impact trick possibilities here on this map, so he is looking to uh, to use it to their advantage. I think Osa Azami removed. I think everybody knows why. And Osa Shield is going to be quite annoying to deal with in some of these lines of sight. Azami speaks for themselves as well. Wah -wah. And then Solace to uh, to lock it all off. So that means that we do have Mira on the board. We do have Valkyrie on the board. And it's up to BDS to decide which of those they want to bring in these very first couple rounds. BDS. They lean in here. They start with their defense. They have, I guess now, you know, Eminem has an even greater challenge ahead of them. Because it's <laughs> not just do as much as you can on the half. Do as much as you can on what is known as the weaker half of this map. There's really a still a bit of a skew, a bit of a statistic that drives... And that's another level of pressure. That's another thing that Eminem have to contend with is, is this an expected loss or is this just the n sort of nature of what happened on the previous map? Yeah, it's, it's what I was saying to you earlier, right? It's like Clubhouse is coming in. I'll really write that off to BDS. The big issue is that Eminem is then starting off an attack on the second map, which they then need to win to bring this to a third. And I'm not saying it's impossible, it's, de it's definitely possible. I mean, Eminem, they might just uh, play the map of their lives at this moment in time. But can you play against BDS, the current reigning major champions? They are basically reborn with Likafak joining their roster. You really need to be on point here. And, and that kind of sharpness that we need to see from them, that was also lacking from Clubhouse. That was not just BDS being better, it's also just a lack of teamwork at times. Or up to the response, Eminem. Time to tell. Ranchero and Alems both sort of playing the swing possibility here with a lot of electronics giving them that stretch support. Neo's going to spray through and get the door open with the safety of range as they opt to pull back. You need 
sort of one swing player playing that pressure onto the cash door. They might suffer from anyone that goes for a rotation, potentially down from computer, which you can see them flirting around with here on M&M. They're going to get that popped open, and then you swing over the top of Dragon. But either way, it's still that single player, and how long will Renjiro stick it? That's it, right? You always have that one player out there to do as much damage as long as he possibly can. And the more time you waste there, the better of a time these defenders on the site will actually have. And we'll talk about defenders actually just three day for now, but the rest of BDS has an opportunity to rotate back quickly. So you shouldn't be too worried about that as of yet. That's the first frag to come in. Still off to be taken up by Shaco all the way from the arcade mezzanine. So a very long shot coming through there for the entry. Hey, there's a prep on a window and a pause. Snello would have heard that, and he's going to get himself somewhere else. Swings through before he finds himself suffering from multiple different angles. Doesn't give BDS the full time to set up. Ranchero drops down. Tyrant gets Shaiko on the back of that. Caught the player out that was the support, but Alems then finds Neo. They keep the pace one into their favor. There's the pings on the player, the reveal, the pull back. It's not quite who Tyrant wanted to get, though. Renshiro, I think he's still yeah, able to just slip his way a little bit back. They've got both the players back into the site outside of the one caught out, and now they have a minute to see if they can try and defend it, with only one now loose from what was only one on the site 30 seconds ago. The Rome clear definitely did his job, though. There's basically no utility left, but everybody's now back on the site. The issue you're going to have is that you are now stuck between uh, the usage of two doors. You can either go for split, which is what Tyron was eyeing up before he just took a small amount of damage there, or the Dragon Door, which is uh, playing close to Bree Day. Now, I don't know, choosing to go for the first one. Impact EMP goes through to burn the Serial Laser Gate. They're hoping to find the first initial kill, which would open up the sign. But BDS again, they have that man advantage. Alem still out on that roam is going to be protecting Dragon. One important thing that we haven't quite commented on yet is the hard breach charges were gone. They no longer have what was in the pockets of the buck, so they've just got to sort of try and drive themselves through what yeah, is a bit of a narrow space. Two doors either side. They find one, get dropped in the trade out. Nello can't quite get the connection with the next. Then it's Alem's. On the back end, and suddenly Tyrant is all alone inside split. There's guns either side of him. He's got a gate there too, and only a pocket full of seconds. He's just going to see if he can pre-fire an angle, bait one of the background fights in it. Can't quite find anything. The loss of the buck proved to limit them, and the limitation proved BDS the first round. Eminem, they used all their phone calls, they used all their Jekyll scans, they used two of the EE1Ds they have with the line scans, as you may, to get the members of BDS back towards the site. They managed to find a couple of kills, but not quite enough to actually have the, uh, the you know, upper hand for that final stand. As you mentioned, losing those Harbridge gadgets, definitely, uh, definitely hurtful to some extent because they were forced through doorways. You're not going to be winning that one out, especially not with that amount of utility still left on the defender. So it was a good attempt for Eminem, but not lasting, unfortunately. And as we're headed up towards the top floor now, we're taking over a look to our left and see uh, a somewhat similar lineup. We see uh, the line, we see the Dokubi still down there, the Bakuniana this time, however, it's a Floors instead of a Jekyll. So focusing a bit more on clearing out the utility rather than clearing out these roamers. Of course, quite, you know, logical considering the fact that, you know, the bottom floor doesn't matter as much now as the top floor does when you're attacking the bottom floor sites. Eminem, once again, we saw what was a structured start. We saw them pull things together. They got themselves into these positions. They were able to force, as you said, a good roam clear and get some of the work done. But once again, BDS were able to just do a little bit of a strike, enough to take the wind out of their setup sails and then push the rest of it. Okay, it's the first round. It's the first round and you're attacking on theme. It's not always expected to go into your favor, but now they've got to make sure they don't fall into that headspace, the one that sort of led to some rocky roads previously. That's what we saw in the uh, 10 star Dynamic game as well, of course, when the 7-0 locked off that second yeah. map. It's, it's not something we want to see here from Eminem, a no. major contestant up against the current major champion. I mean, it wouldn't be a shame to lose against them, but that's not how they want to go out. A striker goes aggressive on the very first, deals a lot of damage to Solotov, but is distracted by the hatch opening up. Yeah, he wanted to risk it for the fight, but he didn't quite want to suffer the bad end of it. The external goo It's just going to give them a bit of an awareness or it should get shot out. They're watching out through the hole as well. Tyrant's going to see if he can try and potentially creep up a different location. The breach and the stretch, the drone there from the floor is getting some intel. There might be some more awareness. There might be a goo mine on that stair set as well that's going to 
reveal anything about the nook as they wait for a slight recharge in a way for the camera, the pressure, the drop, the gate goes back up. Shaiko's back to steal towards the opener, but they just need that first panache, that first bit of a push here against this single target player. He's doing everything he can to buy himself, moves in the back of it, but Shaiko knows what to aim for, pulls himself back ground, still watching the hatch, still patient underneath their tyrant, maybe expecting a fight to come through. There it is. The slow and steady movement was the set. If there's a goo mine, there it is. There's the reveal. Shaiko leads into the fight, gets the fleeing player. And he has played that perfectly. I mean, that's the, that's the trouble with Legion, right? I mean, you can put up seven of those goo mines all around. You know exactly when you're going to be pushed and from where. But as users is now coming through, he's right next to that door. Has Shaco seen him? Well, definitely knows about him now. Leads into the fight, finds the third of the round. And as he finally gets shut down, I believe, no, actually, no, it's Nello with a kill coming through. He's now in the upper arcade hallway here. Knows when it's going to be up on the stairs, but gets taken out by Shaco for his quad. And he's aware of the last in cafe. Doesn't get the ace <laughs> as Neo shuts and down so close towards getting the first ace of this showdown and instead finds himself sitting on four the same as Lee Fact did before this time there is still some hope here for Eminem 30 seconds the thermite with not much health to his name is going to see if he can try and get the breakthrough but you have to realize that they're still watching patiently they have an awareness it's two of the players versus one the rotate comes through the long angle is oh, yeah. planting in the exactly default right. behind train they know where he is they've just got to swing this at the same time and there it is pressure from two opposite end doors not much to be done hands the kit over builds up his teammates cost very nice two rounds in a row BDS. Yes, that's is all that matters here, you know. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, you want if you want to give your friends a treat, let them have the diffuse sometimes. Anyway, good round from BDS there. Shaiko just holding his ground, really. Um, it is basically what he did there. He, he played around that cafe door perfectly, played those goo mines to his own advantage, but. I mean, you cannot really blame him for being the person that he is, for being the fragger that he is, that oh, he uses no. those goo mines to fortify his own power position, which the entire hold revolved around there. So he finds basically two kills on the back of that, finds four in total, not the ace. Oh, so be it. But it's still 2-0 for BDS. They are leading. They're expanding their lead as well as they're headed towards the initiation site now. And as uh, they're creating these long angles, it's going to be making it quite awkward for Eminem to go for a cash take. Yeah, I mean, it, it complicates things. It definitely does. Um, That's for sure. <laughs> especially <laughs> considering the, uh, the the range of the kill we saw from Shaiko as the very first of this map. Going down from the arcade. Um, mezzanine all the way over towards computer's doorway, right? So it's like they're definitely looking to play these long angles. Eminem seeming like they weren't ready for it at that time. Let's hope that is going to be a little bit different now as they approach their third attack. The third tree side, this is often what you're expected to win on your attacks. Well, theme for, for my sort of money marked one of those maps that had an adaptation done when the meta majorly changed. There was obviously changes across the board, but you look at this and you look at Bank and you look at how they went from very sort of claustrophobic defenses with a bit of tower put in towards mm -hmm. big open sight lines. You sort of set yourself up. You try and get a bottom to top kill. You try and get a left to right kill. You're looking for multiple walls, breaches and breaks, and you play it often alongside anything to slow that down, whether it's Mute Jammers, whether it's a, a Rooney Gates, whether it's Castle for some teams. Either way, that is the growth that Theme Park has found itself in and amongst, and that is where Eminem, as he said, they're trying to crack it. And against what has been astounding firefights and preparation on either side, as I said, once upon a time that wall would have been entirely locked, and now it's a threat. Slide opening being made onto the uh, the big side of things, just so you can get a long angle when you're moving from cafe. But it's not going to be the eventual side. It is an extension, though, that they're hoping to cut down. And Lem's now fully aware of it, so they are going to be putting up a little bit more of an awareness out there just to shut down any of the players that might be approaching from that direction. And as the first line scan comes through, they're hoping to move on the back of that. Torrent taking down a PC utility there, instantly followed up by a new goo mine from Shaiko. He's not willing uh, to uh, let that staircase be handed over as quickly. No, he is not. As instead, he's going to get himself a little bit more solidity. They back it off, lock off that back end and turn what can be an angle into something a little bit more supportive. Shaiko doesn't swing there. Onto the call of the goo mine. I think they expected it and didn't hear the pull of the pin or the player try and tuck tail. So they knew the angle was being watched. They hoped they would get 
A little bit lucky to it. Ranchiro pops over the top of the computers, but what you're looking at now is, well, two minutes gone. Tyrant, he gets the hop up. Efac's able to get one kill off the back of it. He's going for a massive bit of surprise, and if he can pull this off here, that's a bold connection. Solitaire, for the first time in a while, it feels like Eminem able to keep themselves toe to toe, but it's very quickly pulled against. There it is. The call, the ping, the pull, and the pressure. Shaiko knew what the game was, and he refused to play. Oh, and now is going to be stuck as a double swing to come through. Doesn't find one, and that's just a clean up. The sweep up of Alams as they find the next round here. They knew where these last two players were. They were basically just locked inside there. Couldn't get out. And that's going to be 3-0 for BDS. They are continuing the dominance that they have shown over Clubhouse. And they're headed back towards the armory and throne room now. This is the site where they managed to get that long opening kill. It was replied to, though, by Eminem. But again, they lacked that man advantage. They only had their Jekyll line. No could be left, which means there was basically no utility to truly breach through the site. So they need that to change that this time around. And does Hibana be, uh, gets brought? Flores gets brought. Pieces of utility you could use to solve the puzzle tossed upon you by BDS. I mean, it is always one of those situations where things get tricky. As I said, there's evaluation. You have to evaluate the progress you're making and weigh it against the expectations you had here. And those change, not generally round to round, but definitely map to map. And the expectations from the last map to this were, let's be more competitive. It's been tricky for them. But what you're looking at, if you glance your eyes over to the side of BDS, is only three players have technically got kills. Granted, they've got themselves a lot, but still, there is room there for Eminem. They're a little bit more connected to, I would say, some of these rounds than they might have been in their sort of lowest towards the latter half of the previous map. It's also the front line, though, of BDS that is, uh, is getting these kills. That was on drone. It was on drone. You still miss out on that one. What happens? Shaiko able to get that first kill, but instantly shut down. That's going to be helpful, at least uh, slightly. And I'm not sure if they went on the drone right, right after they jumped in or right before it, but that's an unfortunate loss. It would have been before. before. It, it had to be before because we saw them. We saw the whole interaction from the perspective of the drone. So did they. Ranchiro finds Solotov. Nello's going to drive right into sight. He wants to get the swing onto the fight, but the reveal comes through. They're going to see if they can plant. They're tucked around in the corner. The impact hits it. The second and the third. <laughs> but that is a little bit more punch packed into it. The two versus one. Nello, he finds himself being watched, pops close with the shotgun, but suffers the wrong end of it. Can't quite find the opposing one, and I'm assuming we'll get a timeout. Yeah, looking at Nello's face as well, he wasn't too happy with how that round played out. I mean, they wanted to go for a quick rush. They saw Shaiko, they saw him isolated, lost the player to that, unfortunately, but still continued their rush. Got to sight, not the plant. And indeed, the timeout is uh, being called. 45 seconds. For Eminem to try and get everything back up on the road. Seeing if they can actually uh, get some rounds on the board here. Because 4-0 so far, it's not boding well for them. Especially looking at how Clubhouse went with a 7-2 loss. And you said it, only three players that kills on the board. Well, that's five now. So be yeah. just listen to your criticism and they decided, you know, if you want us to do better, we'll just do that instead. Listen, I'm, I was looking for the positives. <laughs> and unfortunately, so is BDS. Hey, it's it's rocky. It's tough because you compare some of this Eminem from the Eminem we saw yesterday, whether it's who they're up against, whether it's the sort of fight that's coming through. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at what is for people's money two of the top teams that Eminem's played yesterday and today, <coughs> Wolves and BDS. They're bringing this idea of a fight together against, you know, for some people there's similarities Attackers between these teams located. more than a lot of other teams there definitely is but you know it's also two slightly different approaches to it bds they're being a lot more collected and bds is currently the best team in the world as well um for those of you who missed the uh, yun tripping major they, they, they won it right they finally took it they, they did what they have been Basically favored by fans to do for for years, and yeah, they've done it was it only now. when they weren't favored. Yeah, when they weren't favored, they managed to take the win. But yeah, does this remove that pressure? 
of BDS, because now they've done it. They've won the major, right? What, what's another EUL final? They've already won one of those. Yeah. They've won three tournaments this year. That was the problem. They would win a lot of things like this and not get the major. If they can sort of demonstrate that they can do both, I mean, how many teams have we seen win a major and then drop off a little bit? How many teams have we seen win SI and then drop off a little bit? To be able to keep a consistency after major success is weirdly one of the tougher things for a lot of teams, especially in Siege and BDS. I mean, if I'm going to say Eminem, their performance is definitely suffering from yesterday. BDS is, is just as clean. And that's that sort of worry for any team going up against them. It definitely is. BDS not acting different to any of the teams they're playing against. It's always that same consistent performance we're seeing. And Eminem so far hasn't been able to deal with it at all. It's always that worrying part. As the pressure slowly starts coming down, two minutes left on that clock. You still see Eminem trying to go for a bit of a guess. Where are we going from? Computers is being uh, eyed upon now by Solotov, but as Gemini gets taken out, they see that shield. They know it's going to be quite dangerous to go out there, so users explores a different option. But his drone gets shot out from the drone hole underneath, so he's not even going to be able to enter the building with that RC Rotero. Needs to go for a second. Is that going to be going through? Solotov dies in the meantime by Likafak, who's still aggressive out on this balcony. Spots a second head. Wanted to go for a just for a second there, but he's not going to commit. He's sort of hoping that somebody's going for a swing round. Shaiko did. Shaiko committed, and Shaiko got locked off by Neo, still just holding the rappel. He's by himself. And that's what Lick Effect was trying to find, was maybe a support structure and hoping somebody was going to swing and, you know, treat him like the anchor. But there's nothing else that's currently coming towards the side of Neo. So they can sort of sit and wait. It's a pointless engagement now for them to take. Instead, they pull back. A minute 20, and well, why not start softing off some of this because there's still that in the hard for them to get through. Nello, he's not expecting a jump out per se, but he's hoping that he at least gets a bit of a scratch of an engagement, maybe gets a bit closer to the window as this. The pressure comes across from the two of them. I say he's going to pull back. He actually Wait. steps in, gets one. Oh, and he is waiting with bated breath behind the computer. Cannot get Neo. Neo finds a second and keeps them fighting. So finding Tyrant though, that's a kill that he managed to take out of that engagement in the end. And that's 45 seconds left now for a three on three engagement. LMs still has that shield, but he's completely blind for now. Users hoping to put some pressure right behind it, but it's gonna be a two man lineup right behind that shield. How close can he get? Another flashbang tossed in, goes for the hop up, but blinds himself. Both now going to be blind. He finds the kill though, and that is gonna be initiation in their hands. What can he do from here on? 25 seconds now, and they've done a bit of a dangerous drive here, but for the first time, it is the man advantage into their favor after the attack time out. Two BDS players, Ranchiro and Brede, stuck on the back lines. Now just Ranchiro, two impacts to his name, and 10 seconds to try and game this out. The flashes come through, but he doesn't see the end of it. Eminem finally find their first round on this, the second map, 4-1. to one. They might still be able to pull themselves towards a two to four, a bit of an improvement on before, and what can be expected for some teams on their attack here on theme. At least they have that one round, uh, which is going to be providing them that buffer going into the second half. If this would have been an 06 lock off, it would have been very difficult to, uh, to hold BDS back in all their attacks because the thing is, right? They have that wiggle room then to, to try something funky, to just yeah. go for a rush, to, to just toss it in there if Eminem doesn't seem ready for it. That's just something Eminem doesn't have to their advantage right now. They, they are behind. They need to make up ground. They cannot throw in one of those pocket strats and just hope for the best. They need to try and play this as clean as they possibly can. And that last round, definitely clean. To some extent, like except for the first initial engagement onto Likafak and not being able to isolate him for a second kill, but you still manage to trade him out right after. And, and that is what we like to see from Eminem. That's the gameplay we saw from them yesterday against Wolves, which made them so much better than the other French team that played in the EUL finals. That's what we need to see more. Just that team play, just playing on each other's trades and finding success that way. Vimonti. Picked once again. We saw it once across Clubhouse on Eminem's attack, and it didn't quite work. It was after the tack timeout and didn't quite have the right drive behind it to try and get mm -hmm. control on the opposite end. So here instead, they're going to see if they can set themselves up. It's worth noting the previous round, two of the huge guns of BDS were shut down by Neo. He sort of held himself a bit solid. It's not always that name that you put on the list of kills, but at this point, you need everybody to start showing up here and trying to plug the gaps that are otherwise being put inside of you. 
In fact, he's got himself stepped up and prepped up ready around the drop of the hatch if he wants to take it. But for now, well, his Tyrant may be putting some pressure on from underneath. There's a the thing with Eminem, right? Normally Tyrant uses in Solotov those are the three that put up the kills for the team and really allowed him to uh, to go for these entries. I was going to say, as Likafak goes unspotted again in that position, that could be crucial. Is that the Gemini? It's yes, a Gemini. It it's a Gemini. He's uh, worried for him there for a second. The grenade is going to be coming around the corner. That is something he cannot do anything about. <laughs> Moves into it. That's the entry kill again for Eminem. A perfect delivery there for him. Solotov. And now they're going to see if they can try and move behind it. The Monty is getting the pings out. They've got themselves prepped up here inside the control room. They're peering over at a hefty computer desk and hoping that the swing comes around against them. The first drone has dropped. And actually is able to pop off. Not quite in the range there of where they wanted it to go. The second is just going to get the reveal of the player behind the pillar. The Monty is watching. They know that there's one technically isolated, but you still have to drive your way in. There's an XRC Retiro taking out that shield a little bit further in. Smoke canister is coming through right now to stop any form of support. But Solotov does that instead by taking out Manchiro. An instant return from a smoke canister coming through from a lens to hold the Monty at bay. Grenade coming through, but it's not going to be doing too much damage on the Bride, who holds on tight. Has that shotgun out. Is wanting to go for an instant kill here. Eminem still trying to knock on the front doors. They were users repelling in. That's it. Users now putting pressure onto the back line. He's seen that it's fully locked at this point. It's Actually, a little bit more of a swing than he might have expected. There's the reveal. The player is here. He's caught on the pillar. Finds the second and uses with Tyrant making the final connection. Two rounds to their name and a flawless as well. Okay, Eminem, the timeout has definitely opted a lot better than before. How much of a difference now can you start to put here on your defense? These two rounds were more than necessary for Eminem because this gives them a fighting opportunity as they head over towards the defense themselves. Now they will be on the favored side. Going up against BDS. However, I believe Anne mentioned it before, they were flawless under attack during the major in the grand final. So that is something that Eminem will have to fend off here. See if they can stop BDS in their tracks. Start getting into their heads a little bit here. They start off by doing so. We're going towards the throne room again. So we're going towards that ground floor. It's, it's quite a difficult side to attack to some extent. Um, three uh, walls that sometimes do get opened up. Depends on which ones they actually want to go for. Looking at the right hand side, Bride bringing out Hibana. So the Xcarus will be in play. Not using the Thermite, probably due to uh, often impact tricks coming through. And if you look at the left hand side of your screen, you see six of them on the board. So. It's going to be uh, a bit more of a range operation here. Yeah, I mean, give yourself a bit of an arm's length. Well, oh, that's a hidden drone in the side by Shanko. Knows that uh, now.
bugging the fuck out.